All right. <laughs> Greetings and salutations. Welcome back to another Final Expense Telesales Deep Dive. We're doing it live here today. It is January 3rd, 2024. And I'm so happy to see you guys on today's training. Uh, greetings and salutations to Luis, Allison, uh, Guam Tech, and everybody else. Thank you so much for being here. So as we get started today, I want to talk about what we're going to talk about. And then before we actually talk about what we're going to talk about, and otherwise give you kind of the uh, table of contents overview of what to expect. So the purpose of this call really is to do a deep dive analysis of final expense telesales. And uh, to go over things, for example, like our script, our new and improved script that we've been working with for uh, quite a while now that's done amazing things. I'm going to give you the entire overview and not just hand you the script, but actually uh, have you uh, actually, actually get you to go through it with me so you can see not just what we're saying, but why we're saying what we do and what we teach the dig agency agents to do to sell over the phone. We're also going to spend some time going over well, I would call my observations of telesales. We've been doing telesales here at the Dig Agency for approximately, uh, it's been like four years now, really since the COVID lockdown started, uh, forced every agency to seriously consider doing telesales. Uh, and we certainly, like many, made the transition into offering that. And we've learned a ton. And so what we're going to do as well is spend time going into, I think, some important fundamentals about final expense telesales so that you can avoid the mistakes that we have made over the past couple of years, like every agency makes, so that, again, the more you avoid mistakes, the more likely you can be profitable, right? So that is the idea. Learn from others' mistakes. Don't make them your, yourself if you can help it. Uh, greetings, David. Good to see you. Glermo, Paige, everybody else. Peter, thanks for being here. All right. And uh, also, of course, as I like to do in these calls, uh, your uh, questions that you have for me are what I care about the most. So as we go through today's presentation, we're going to first start with the observations of final expense telesales and its implications for 2024. Um, we're also going to get into the script too after that. As you have questions, that is what the chat is for. Just throw your questions in the chat and I'll be happy uh, to answer them for you as we go through. So if a question just permeates to your brain and you have to type it out, please do. And I'll be happy to answer your question. We'll also leave time at the end of today's presentation for questions that you may have uh, that weren't answered earlier. So I like doing these trainings. I love doing these trainings because I'm able to give back to you guys and um, help you guys out, whether you're working with the dig agency or not. <clears throat> and it's a pleasure to be here. One uh, question here. Uh, thank you, Max. Looking good, Dave. Mr. T, hey, good to see you. Um, let me know if my coat looks electric. We had a little wardrobe malfunction, I think, a, a time or two ago on a live stream, and it looked like I was constantly being electrocuted. It's kind of funny. So if it looks weird, you know, with this on, let me know. I'll take it off, okay? I don't want to uh, cause anybody to have an epileptic seizure, all right? All right. So is this being recorded? We'll answer that question to begin with. Tim, hey, good to see you. Recording, yes, it is being recorded. In fact, uh, if y'all got a bail, like you got a client to call, you got to close somebody, don't go do that. That matters, right? You need to make money. Uh, this will be recorded automatically. So the link that got you here is the link to watch the recording. So just save this link, watch it as you need to, and uh, you'll be good to go. All right. Okay, good. Looks like um, just flashy blue. I can do flashy blue, just not electrically flashy blue, right? All right, cool. Okay, awesome. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, by the way, uh, help a brother out here. Hit the like button if you haven't already. Uh, that tells the YouTube algorithm to uh, share this video amongst the uh, final expense uh, agent masses. Uh, we've got 177 viewers in here in just the first five minutes. That's awesome. So uh, super duper excited. Thank you for the nice words, everybody. Tom, Cheryl, and Cynthia. Okay, cool. So, uh, and, and if you can hear the, uh, the lawn guy, of course, has to show up literally as we start this very important live stream. So apologize for any of the background uh, noise that's going on. All right, so let's get started. So observations and experience. I'm gonna jump into the perspectives, the the things I've learned that our team at the Dig Agency has learned when it comes to final expense telesales. 
Uh, because a lot of you watching this are probably thinking about selling final expense or you've just began selling final expense. And there's a lot of mistakes you can make in this business. And if at all possible, you want to avoid making those mistakes uh, and understand as much as possible to the environment of the business model that you are in, right? So a um, couple of things we want to jump into. So again, context here. I've been doing, I've sold final expense uh, briefly as an agent, probably starting in 2016, 2017 with some self-generated leads. Uh, we occasionally had a few agents up till about 2020 doing telesales. And then we went bigly into it really as, as the COVID lockdown started and really developed our program, recruited agents. Uh, and now we're at the point, of course, where probably two out of three of our agents now are final expense telesales focused completely, which is incredible to think four years ago, there was barely any. And uh, it's the majority of the, the production that's done in our business too. Uh, so the telesales part of our business model at the Dig Agency is huge. Um, whereas a lot of people still think we just do face-to-face. -face. It's not the case. We're more into telesales than we ever have been in our agency's period of time being here. And um, this informs us with these um, revelations, these experiences, these mistakes that we've made. So I wanted to preface that with you so you understand this is coming from, you know, experience. Okay. So the number one thing, not really number one, this is all kind of equivalently important, but I want to make sure that we cover it all. Um, with telesales, the one thing that I have learned is that you've got to get to the point a lot faster when you sell over the phone. Uh, case in point, uh, Tim Hildebrand, you're going to see, uh, he's my telesales trainer. He has uh, really done a great job redesigning the script to eliminate a lot of the redundancy and the parts of the script that maybe you've read in the past that just are unnecessary, that don't uh, progress the ball down the field as quickly enough. And so what we've been able to do with this new script we're about to get into is cut down the amount of time per sale without reducing the conversion rate. So that gives our agents the ability to make more dials, speak to more people, and therefore, while keeping their closing rates the same, meaning they're gonna close more people because instead of being on the phone for 50 minutes, they're on the phone for 30 minutes, let's say, as an example. So you, why do we have to do this for telesales? Well, because your client's attention is just like this, right? Uh, a lot of them have already been pitched on final expense. And when you talk to them, they don't really have the same level of patience as somebody who is selling face-to-face. -face. So I think it's, it's really important as we get into the script, you're gonna see a lot of it is about how do we hook the client's attention? How do we get them to pay attention to this, even though they want to pull away and not hear the same thing that they've heard uh, in the past before? So we're going to get into that script. But as you go through the telesales process, understand these long scripts are not the way to be in this business. There are some organizations that push these just really long scripts. And, and they, yes, they will convert, but at the sacrifice of volume of, of what you could be converting. Uh, it, it's kind of like what we, we teach with rapport building. There's some point where enough is enough and you don't have to like build 15 minutes of rapport because you can build it inside of 60 seconds, right? So the same concept applies to telesales. You got to get to the point and you got to actually answer and get on with it. Um, otherwise, you're going to lose people's attention uh, and not convert as much and not do as many presentations because the volume of presentations in this business is key, okay? Another thing with telesales, very important for you new guys to understand out there, tonality, pacing, performance is everything when it comes to the wide world of selling over the phone. I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, some some telesales people to watch if, if you haven't watched yet. Johnny Nittafan. Uh, uh, also, Peter uh, Roberts. Um, these people put up live telesales calls. And, and they're really good to watch because you get to see the performative dynamics of what these agents are doing to sell over the phone. And it, it, the point being is that if you get on the phone and you just run through the script without uh, an emphasis on how you're saying something, are you yelling it? Sometimes you got to speak over a client, right? Sometimes you got to lean in and whisper. Sometimes you got to pause. You got to learn all these little nuances because they absolutely matter much more when you're selling over the phone than say if you're selling in person, okay? So as we go through the script today, we're definitely gonna emphasize the performative aspect of the script. We're gonna kind of talk about what the tone will be, maybe when you're handling a certain kind of objection. Uh, we're certainly gonna talk about pacing because there's certain parts of the script 
where you want to use the uncomfortability, is that a word? I guess it is. The uncomfortableness of the silence to emphasize a point to really get at the reason why the client should buy a policy from you today. So we'll go over that as we get into the script, but understand you just can't, you know, read the script without actually performing it in a way that communicates. Because all you have over the phone, ladies and gentlemen, is this, it's your voice. It's not your body language. It's not your eye contact. The face-to-face -face guy or gal has that easy. They don't have to worry about performing as well uh, to the same extent as a, as a telesales agent, but as a telesales agent, that's all you got, right? Now, continuing on, a couple other things here. Another big issue with telesales, and, and, and we've done a really good job of rectifying this, is actually getting people to pick up the phone. Now, how many of you actually out there are selling final expense and you've been sitting there dialing and dialing and dialing and it's just like you're just listening to dial tones all day. Nobody ever picks up the phone. Well, the reason for that is because a lot of these cell phone carriers have now instituted these spam likely, you've seen these, telemarketer likely type of, of filters where based off of the call volume you're doing and the frequency of calls, you're automatically arbitrarily labeled as likely a scam or likely a telemarketer. And then your connection ability, the ability for you to talk to a prospect falls off a cliff. And then you may be only speaking to a small percentage of those leads every day that otherwise would pick up that won't because they're being filtered out by the carriers. So what you have to do is essentially set yourself up for success by avoiding some of these spam likely filters by uh, setting your phone number and your phone system up to not get inundated uh, with these uh, uh, scam likely stuff that just prevents you from making sales. Because most of what we're gonna go over, we're gonna go over leads in a minute. Most agents are doing outbound sales to leads, which means you gotta make phone calls, which means a lot of times if you're not filtering correctly, spam likely, telemarketer likely, et cetera, is gonna show up. So you, you may ask, um, what's the solution, Dave? Well, the solution is, uh, and write this down, um, tell them I sent you, is a dialer called Kixie. This has been the best solution that we've seen for a dialer. Um, and a dialer is, by the way, it's a phone system that calls one or multiple phone lines at a time of your leads. But the cool thing about Kixie in short is that it's programmed to avoid uh, completely legitimately, follows compliance rules and everything, all the spam likely filters, et cetera. And so what we've seen is somewhere between the 200 to 300% increase in the connections to actually talk to the lead. So like, for example, maybe it took us 100 dials before somebody would pick up, just like an example, but now it's taking more like 33 or 50 dials in order for someone to pick up the phone. So Kixie, K-I-X-I-E.com, tell them Dave DeFord sent you. Um, it's been a night and day difference, y'all. And uh, there are other videos out there. Jeff Root at Digital BGA did a video on how to get your number off of um, off of uh, the spam likely filter. If you do a search for it, that's helpful, but there's a lot of different tools you have to buy. You've got to regularly update it on a regular basis. And for us, Kixie is kind of just the one and done solution. That's reasonably priced. Um, yeah, ask them for a discount, Rudy. Just uh, demand it. <laughs> See what they say. So I'll, I'll put it in the chat here. I don't actually have an affiliate code, but I do have um, poll maybe, I don't know. Just tell them I sent you, That's that should be enough, okay. So Kixie, get, just get the dialer. That's gonna help your connection rates maximize as high as possible. And uh, in my opinion, uh, do a really good job of getting you going and making sure that the calls that you're making are actually going to get through. Another method that does work at times uh, is actually triple dialing as well because the act of triple dialing, by the way, triple dialing is when the first two times you call in a row, the client doesn't pick up, so you call a third time. That triggers on a lot of phones, the ringing uh, capability, uh, and people will pick up the phone. A lot of times your clients just don't ever see you calling because they've set it up to not take people who aren't on their contact list. But a triple dial triggers the ability for an, uh, an unknown contact to be rung for that prospect so that they'll pick up the phone more likely. So if you're not using Kixie, you have to triple dial all your clients. Um, if you want me to clarify that all, let me know. But uh, that is really, really important. Okay, I'm going to take a couple of questions here from the chat before I keep going through my list of observations and exercises and ex uh, experiences. By the way, are we enjoying our, our training so far? Do we like what we see? If you, if you haven't yet, hit the like button. If you like it, say so in the chat. Just uh, let YouTube know. Cool. 
All right, so let's get started here. From Peter Koffler. Hey, Peter, what do we what do we need to look for in a release when we're first starting to contract with an agency? So a release, so you guys know, is, is does the agency allow you, if you don't like their setup, to change carriers and then move to another agency? To me, this is standard in the business, especially if you're buying your own leads. You should be able to get a release. Now, we at the Dig Agency, we release agents who are on our free lead program for telesales, also our free lead program for face-to-face, as well as for our broker programs where agents buy their own leads. Um, but the point being is that, look, we're all out here. I mean, I'm wearing my nice, you know, electric blue blazer, smiling at you. You know, I'm, I'm not putting my best foot forward. I'm trying to at least, right? But sometimes, you know, the best foot forward isn't you know, actually what it ends up being when you're a part of the organization. And so the point is, if you don't have the ability to get a release, then you can't move those carriers that you contracted through the agency with to another agency that maybe will do a better job for you. So it's kind of like a, a plan B. Uh, uh, and, and to me, an agency that allows agents to be released says confidently, we believe in what we say so much so that if you want to walk out the door, that's fine. We won't hold you hostage because we're confident in what we do. It, it's a confidence test, right? And look, there are three-letter IMOs out there, the MLM types where the owner stood up and say, anytime you want to release, we'll give it to you back. Fast forward three years now, they require 12 months before you're able to move your carriers because, you know, they got sold out, their values changed because, you know, that kind of stuff. So with that said, um, always work with an agency that gives a release. Uh, those are typically quality people that care about the product, which is servicing you, the agent, to help out, help you out the most. And do the, how do the releases work with advances, chargebacks, and speed of carry releasing us? Typically, it's a couple week process to get released. So if an agent comes to us, they go to their organization, get a release, or we sign a release for them, and then there's back and forth between my agency and their agency, their other agency, paperwork assigned, that's sent to the carrier, and then it's about a week or two process before the carriers are released. And and y'all, look, if, if you can't get releases because you're stuck in an MLM and they don't release, there's great carriers out there with other companies that refuse to work with MLMs. There's a couple that I work with that are excellent that aren't with the three-letter IMOs that are out there, and um, they're great to work with. So, you know, don't worry or get too hung up if you can't get a release. I think it's important to be able to be released. Don't get me wrong. It speaks to the character of the organization and their beliefs and conviction. But at the end of the day, if you can't, know that there's other options for carriers, okay? The advances and chargebacks, you still have to pay those, right? If you get a release, uh, they're still your responsibility, uh, even if you pop over to another agency, okay? Perfect. Yeah, we're gonna get, yeah, excellent. Thank you, Scott. Check is in the mail. Um, I'm, go to, this is what I want you to do. I don't have the script ready right now, but if you guys go to davidduford.com forward slash ISS, I'm going to put that into the chat here. Hold on one second. DavidDeFord.com forward slash ISS. Uh, sign up for a free, it's a. It's called Insurance Sales Success. Free training galore there. Final expense, Medicare annuities, ACA. Um, lots of video-based training. It's fantastic, especially if you're newer or thinking about selling some of those other products. There's no cost. It's completely free. I'm going to upload the script there after this event is done. So just pop over there if you don't already have an account. If you do, thank you very much. Um, and then um, I'll post in the forum, here's the final expense telesales script from the training. So just make sure that you set it up for that, okay? Awesome. How many dials a day is normal selling full-time telesales? As many as humanly possible. Um, the better way to look at it, Dave, is you want to get as maximal amount of call time or, or talk time as much as possible. So, so this is just, are you on task with making dials or talking? And for full time, I'd say it's eight to 10 hours a day is what you really want. Um, eight being the minimum, more if possible. And that's on the dialer trying to get someone on the phone, not like taking a two hour break. We don't count that, right? So um, yeah, talk time, 40 plus hours a week is what you want, in my opinion. Uh, triple dial, 100 day minimum. Uh, yep, you can triple dial. Uh, yeah, thank you, Guam Tech. It is definitely a lot uh, shorter as you will see momentarily. Thank you for the likes, everybody. 225 viewers so far. That's awesome. Uh, performative dynamics. <laughs> yeah. All right. What are the best states to be licensed in for lead availability? So this would be selling over the phone. You can't just sell your one state. So I was talking to a gentleman yesterday who was thinking about joining. And then I said, hey, you just can't sell in your state. You're going to have to pick up nine other states. That's just how it is. And he was like, well, why? Didn't realize that. And I said, well, the problem is, is that if you're going to buy leads or self-generate leads, 
over the phone sales, you have to have more volume and population to drive the cost down. Most of us who are selling over the phone are using a Facebook derived type of lead. And in order to get enough volume, you just have to have more states. So understand if you're going to do telesales, our requirement is you have to have at least 10 resident or 10 non-resident states, one, 10 states particular, which and sometimes you already got one of them. So you buy nine, right? Um, and that's about an additional 800 to $900 cost. But we do that because instead of paying $15 a lead, you pay six or $7 a lead, right? And while there is that high upfront cost, it's not really that bad. But it makes up for it within the first couple of weeks of getting leads because the price point's way lower than it would have been. Does that make sense? So make sure that you have multiple states. Now, which states are good to get? I personally like California, Texas, Florida. They're very populated states. Um, Tim could probably speak to the other ones that we work with. Definitely some in the Southeast, uh, definitely some in the Midwest. And um, yeah, it, I mean, they're great. So, you know, there's not really any states that are bad, except for this. There's some northeastern states that don't have as many carrier options. So it's it's not that we don't sell up there because, you know, we don't like the people up there. Um, Yankees. Uh, I live in Chattanooga, so give me a break. Tennessee. Anyways, just joke. Um, but it's because sometimes the carriers don't have voice signatures or there's just not as much variability in voice signatures or, vo or carriers themselves. Okay. All right. So uh, hopefully that answers that question. Yeah, Monty, sorry about that. Finally, they are done. What creates spam likely, Joe? Uh, pretty simple. It is just the um, constant calling from your phone. The the carriers that receive the phone calls, I believe, they start they notice that, hey, this guy's making like 200 calls a day. <laughs> That's unusual. You know, the average person's calling a couple times a day, right? So they have these algorithms that flag that account as likely a spam caller, right? So why do they do this? Because you guys know it's terrible, right? I mean, who wants to talk to people on the phone? It constantly rings with scams and uh, people sell Medicare, final expense, right? And so uh, there's a user uh, experience issue with the phones and the carriers are trying to fight back against that, understandably. And so this is why we like Kixi because it's it works around these issues automatically without you having to fool around figuring out how to do it manually. Okay, cool. Yeah, and you'll see stuff like dental offices, legitimate companies all the time that show up that way. And it's just, it's just sucks, you know, and it hurts their businesses, but it's arbitrary. And there's things you can do to mitigate that. But uh, for our business selling over the phone, Kixie Dollar's just been awesome. Okay. Can I get a release to your agency quickly if I haven't sold for a previous upline for nine months? Yeah. So if you're outside of selling anything in the last six months, you likely don't even need to request a release with anywhere, right? Just you're a free agent. You don't have a contract, if you will, with the carrier. So just go to where you want to sell and then you'll be able to make the move, no problem. Yeah, Talons, we've had some expats. Uh, I had a couple of young guys and gals that sold. They lived in El Salvador, somewhere down there. And they liked to surf during the day and then sell at night. You know, the the fun life you used to have when you didn't have kids, right? You know, so. Uh, but yeah, there's there's been some expats that we talked to. The key thing, though, if you're going to sell abroad internationally is you need a home base and you need to have U.S. residency, right? So uh, for all my international uh, viewers out there, if you're not, I think, at least a U.S. resident, you can't get an insurance license, so you can't sell. But if you're an American and you retain your citizenship and you have a home base on some state, you can get a license uh, in that state. You're still going to have to fly in and take the test uh, in the state though, you know, so understand that you got to come back and, and usually the tests are required to be taken in person. There may be some COVID um, allowances for that in place, but most of those are pretty much gone. Hey, Advanced Agent Mark, how you doing? Tim and Julian. Cool. Uh, do chargebacks increase in a failing slow economy? Um, I mean, you, uh, you think so on paper, right? Because as people get tight with their money that they would change their spending habits, but the cool thing about final expense is that the people we talk to, they know they're going to die. They're getting old. They've seen people already die. And, and, and life insurance, where it was kind of an optional thing, it becomes more of a necessity. And, and the likelihood that they're going to buy and keep it is a lot higher, in my experience. Um, we've, I've been in business since 2011. I started in the middle of the Great Recession. Um, I went through, we went through COVID, right, from 2020 to 2022, 23, right? And my business grew, I think we tripled, no, close to tripled our net income as a business during COVID. 
And, you know, so what does that tell you? People wanted to buy, right? And that was economic hard times for a lot of people, losing their jobs, not going to work, right? Inflation concerns, right? The business has been fantastic. And, and, it, and it's not just mine, but if you look at um, Lincoln Heritage, um, if you look at their production from 2010 to 2020, probably beyond, they've increasingly had more and more production every year. And this is a carrier that has a higher price product um, with, that's a one product only solution, right? And some would argue it's, it's not as superior of an option as being a broker with other products, right? But the point is even that kind of product, if that's your argument, still does very, very well. So I think what we're, what plays well with the final expense business, why I like it for the long term, is because the baby boomers. The baby boomers are all retiring right now and will be for the next 20 years. The, the, the demographics of this country from an age standpoint, we're progressively getting older and people are ending up in retirement with less money. And, and I mean, these are just fundamentally true. And that's not gonna change. And social security probably isn't gonna change much because the voting block is getting older and they're not gonna vote away benefits that they need to survive. So that's the income that it takes to buy life insurance. So I just don't see it going anywhere. Um, and the nice thing about final expense unlike Medicare is that it's not relegated or uh, monitored by a government entity like Medicare is, right? Like with CMS, there's some big rules coming down that might totally uh, impact that business model for everybody. With final expense, you just don't get it. Um, it's not run by the government. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'll, this is why I'm 100% I'm behind final expense. Um, the business hasn't really changed much. Big thing being there's more telesales than there were when I started, but the foundation of it's pretty much the same. So, uh, and it's grown through hard times that we've been through. So why not do it? It's kind of my thing. Cool. Any other good rebuttal to the anger over the third call other than just to let, yeah, that's, that is a perception that really doesn't happen. You know, the triple dial, people answer the phone and they scream at you. You just do your script. Uh, but the nice thing with anger is they're going to be to toned in and focused on what you're saying. But a lot of the times, once they realize it's something they requested and you get into the script, most of them will chill out. The, the, the fear factor of their retaliation or anger is just not that big of a deal. And yeah, New York, don't sell in New York over the phone or in person. If you live in that state, sell over the phone outside of New York. Uh, the carrier and compensation uh, rules are just, they just destroy my ability to recruit anybody, but everybody else's too. It's just not a good place to go. Are chargebacks higher in telesales? Uh, if so, what have you seen as an average? My chargebacks as an agency have not been any different with telesales versus face-to-face. I used to hear for years that telesales has worse chargebacks, that there's more issues, um, that people are more flighty and they dump your policy more often. I really haven't seen a difference at all in the outcome of the quality of business. Um, case in point, one of our favorite carriers, um, Trinity Life Insurance, granted we do some face-to-face -face with them too, but a lot of telesales as well. We have an average persistency of 93 to 94% in the first year. So that means out of 100 policies written, only seven are gone. That's incredible, right? Now, that's a lot higher than other carriers out there, but I haven't seen issues with chargeback issues because of it's over the phone. Um, I would argue that it's probably how the agent is selling and what options they chose other over other ones that are probably leading to the chargebacks, which is really pretty much the same issues that you see um, with face-to-face. So if that's precluding you or stopping you from selling because you're worried about getting hit with more chargebacks, to me, it's, no, I don't, I don't, really, don't really see it. Okay, we're licensed in like 35 to 40. Um, we do business in all states though, but there's some that we just don't do a lot in like New York, Alaska. Don't think we, we sold one policy up in Alaska. I think Chris Sorrentino did that one. And then Montana, uh, but we got most of them. <clears throat> yes, that's right, Preston, correct. Thank you, Tim. In, in case you're wondering what states we like to use, we've listed them there. Um, let's continue going. Probably Barry. It probably does. <clears throat> but it also gets you to ring the phone number that, that it otherwise wouldn't. Um, yeah, we don't triple dial. Now, some people do triple dial with the Kixie dialer that we've seen, but we just don't need to. We're calling so many lines and the spam likely stuff's not a problem. So there's just a lot more dials that are made uh, because we use that dialer versus uh, something else. Okay. Uh, is there an explanation of the role uh, you should select when purchasing your states? Um, 
I don't know. I think it's just producer. It just depends on the state. I think that's the issue. Do you have an agency plan for telesales? You'll have to clarify what that means. I don't know what you mean by that. Uh, okay. Let me, okay, I'll take a break from questions here. I want to go back to the observations here because I think we'll kind of hit some of these questions as we go. Okay. So we talked about so far, scripts got to be shorter. We're going to jump into that in a little while and why that's important. Tonality, pacing, performance, why that's so important over the phone, why you got to work on that. We're going to, again, hit that as we go through the script here and there as we go through it. Also, why increasing connection rate is so important. Uh, a big killer of a lot of telesales agents is not the no's, it's the maybes. It's the people that never pick up. That if you got them to pick up, you'd make some sales too. Okay. So um, now let's talk about leads. Uh, this is an important conversation. So first of all, you new agents, like final expense is a leads driven business. Uh, this is not a friends and family strategy to sell insurance to. Uh, very few agents make it in this business uh, on a referral basis. The way that they make it in this business is by finding a lead system that works really well, that's scalable, that's affordable, and that is consistent in execution. So I'm going to give you what I've seen work really well, but I'm also going to tell you some things to avoid because, again, we don't want you to spend the money that you have that is precious and limited on crap and garbage, especially with some new rules coming down the pike with the FCC. We'll talk about that in a minute. So number one, what we like the best at my agency and what we almost use exclusively are Facebook-generated leads. Uh, why do we like Facebook? Because Facebook <clears throat> is just it's where old people hang out, right? I mean, think about it. Uh, the young people aren't using Facebook anymore. Uh, they're using Snapchat and TikTok and other platforms. Uh, Facebook is f full of seniors and people who end up buying final expense. There's been a big shift in the demographics on Facebook and therefore, it plays well into generating leads from it. The other nice thing about Facebook is that you can get leads quickly. You can get leads rather affordably if done correctly, whether you buy from a vendor or whether you do it yourself or have an ad management program. Um, and, and you just have to make sure with Facebook leads to make them work well, you have to have good copy, meaning the, the words on the ad are not deceptive. You know, like I remember seeing an ad that had... Um, uh, a senior in front of the Social Security Administration building and it said Social Security Administration building on it. And then as you read the copy, it insinuated this is like a government program and it was free. And, you know, no references to the price or anything like that. It's not that you can't make money on those. It's just a lot harder. So I have a higher intent that's clear to the point. People know what they're getting into. Um, you may pay a little bit more per lead, but I think the intent of the lead is going to be better. And you need to make sure, like I said, to have high volume. Now, if you're a full-time agent, my advice is to take 100 plus Facebook leads a week, okay? I would probably, as you get up and running, push that number up to 150 and beyond. You need to be drowning in leads. Uh, the best problem to have is too many people to talk to. The worst problem to have is too few. And it's way easier to deal with too many. You just slow down your lead purchases than to deal with too few because it may take time before you get the volume back up. So in the telesales game, if you're going to use Facebook leads, Make sure that you do a volume of leads. You also want to make sure that you do fresh and exclusive leads. Get away from shared leads. We'll talk about how that's going to be illegal here very soon. Fresh and exclusive leads are leads that were just generated and that are not resold to another agency or agent. Uh, this gives you the best chance of dealing with somebody who has a higher intent and will actually buy what it is that you are selling. Um, Beyond that, uh, also, uh, we've seen some good results with uh, TV leads. Now, we don't do a lot of TV leads in our agency. Pro most reason being the price point has, is too high for most agents. We've offered it in the past. We've tried to drum up interest, but most TV leads are $65 to $75 a lead, depending on who you're buying them from. And, you know, for 20 transfers, you get $1,500 investment. You could have had 150 leads easily Facebook-wise, right? So, but it, TV leads appeal to the person that wasn't, doesn't want to do outbound calls. Totally understand that. But for a lot of agents, they're just too big of a bite to, to take off, right? Um, and also, I've been hearing some chatter. I hear it from my agents. I hear it from others that TV has gotten more difficult. The, uh, it's more competitive now. Uh, the quality of the, the lead is, is lowered. The intent has lowered. Um, one of my best telesales agents absolutely refuses to do TV leads. Uh, he's been with me for probably two and a half, three years now. 
um, because a lot of them in his experience would just cancel their policy. It was too uh, instantaneous of a decision, like a knee-jerk reaction to buy. And he had just the highest tr- amount of trouble with TV leads. And he's a great agent, otherwise sells 25, 30,000 a month pretty consistently. So, um, but with that said, TV leads can work um, if you want more of that, you know, people call you type of approach to the business. Just understand you're going to pay a lot. So with that said, these are the two that I like. These are the two that I've seen work with my, our emphasis on Facebook leads. Um, for our agents, uh, we don't recommend self-generation of leads. You can if you want to do that. We've seen better results with an ad management program. That's what we call at our agency, the Alpha Lead Program. Right now in its current iteration, you pay 500 bucks a month plus a $500 to $1,000 weekly deposit for ad spend. And then you get the leads that are generated at cost. You don't have to worry about managing the campaign. You're paying between $5 and $10 a lead and the $500 monthly management fee. And you're working fresh and exclusive leads that never get resold. It's um, a really good thing. So, uh, of course, and then our free lead agents work those same leads, but they don't pay for any of it. There's no cost to them whatsoever. They just work a little bit lower commission, but get the same quality of leads. Now, let's talk about the leads that I wouldn't recommend. Now, this is really important because you're probably going to be tempted uh, enticed to get these kind of leads, but they're very soon going to be made illegal. And then you're going to be on the hook if you get caught using these type of leads and somebody decides to do a TCPA violation or lawsuit against you. So the, the two types of leads that really are garbage, they've always, well, one of them can be good, but one of them is absolutely garbage is what we call data leads and live transfers. So let me explain the difference. So you understand data leads um, I don't really understand. There's probably a marketer out here. If you, you feel free to explain this a little bit more in detail, but my understanding of what a data lead is, is a very, very, very low intent type of lead with most people not even recognizing they ever requested information. Uh, I like to think of it like a survey lead where somebody's asked questions about their personal inclinations and then that information is shared and then resold to different marketing organizations for pennies on the dollar as somebody who has an interest in, say, final expense or life insurance. Well, there are organizations out there who will sell these data leads that are cheap to procure for $9, 10 $11 a piece and then resell them over and over. And that in of itself has become uh, a money grab, a cash cow. I mean, think about it. If you're selling a product that, that costs 25 cents to acquire and you make a $50 profit, I mean, that's a hell of a business, right? But not not if the product sucks. And that's been the problem. There's been a lot of these agents with these three-letter IMOs, uh, and you guys know I'm talking about, that have bought these leads, um, lost thousands of dollars, were promised one thing, that they were exclusive and fresh. They call the leads. They don't remember doing it. They don't pick up the phone. And then if they do, they said, you're like the fifth or sixth person calling. And it screwed a lot of people out of a lot of money. And the short is, is you got to stay away from these data leads. They're not even leads. They're like names in a phone book. They're cold calling, uh, except that you pay out the nose for them. And a lot of the live transfers originate from the data. And that's why you know, I put live transfers on that list too, because a lot of them originate in that way. Although we'll probably see some shift with the new FCC law with more of call-ins coming from uh, actual ads. They'll facilitate call-ins to avoid some of these sharing rules or issues that you see with the data and the live transfers. So speaking quickly on the FCC, uh, there was a a rule passed recently that essentially uh, eliminates the data, uh, a a way to to get leads and how to generate them and leads going forward. And there's been a lot of, uh, frankly, I'm kind of disappointed with some people in this business, a lot of clickbait. Leads are illegal. Leads are going away. Uh, I'm all for clickbait if it's true, but a lot of these uh, influencers in our space are trying to do fear mongering. And it's, it's, it's not something that's probably gonna affect you if you're not using data leads. And leads are not going away, okay? But what is going away is the garbage, which is the good news. And it's these data leads that really aren't leads. Um, so what that'll happen is now going forward, if you're like, well, what does that mean for me? Uh, the main thing is, is that any leads that you generate have to have a one-to-one connection. The client has to make the decision. If there's more than one person that's going to receive the leads, they have to literally click the box of who is going to receive the leads. So they are in control of who is going to contact them. Whereas before, they may have their information resold a bunch of times to Lord knows how many vendors and just be barraged by all sorts of of telemarketing calls. 
The good news is that if you're doing Facebook marketing, if you're doing your own self-generated leads, if you're buying from vendors, I like ttcleads.com. Uh, by the way, if you want to buy leads for telesales, that's not going to be affected. They're going to put in, uh, they probably already have uh, uh, arrangements to where the one-to-one -one rule is going to be employed and that there won't be any sort of uh, confusion as to who the lead goes to. So this is ultimately, as a consumer, this is excellent for our business. Uh, it's going to upend, I think, in the short term, a lot of the MLM stuff because this is how they recruit. They recruit in masses and sell them these cheap leads, but these are going away. Um, and it's likely going to cut down on a lot of the garbage that our agents are sold. So it's, it's ultimately a good thing for you guys out there and the agent uh, or and the client too. So uh, leads, uh, yes, Facebook and TV leads, no to anything data live transfer and, and don't get stuck buying the stuff because it will be made illegal very soon, next six to eight months. And uh, you don't want to be uh, out of compliance. Okay. All right. Let's hit some questions up here in the chat. Uh, 245 live viewers. Good to see everybody here. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Make sure you smash the like button if you intend, if you like this stuff. All right. And yes, we're going to get to the script here momentarily, going over some kind of observations, experiences about the business, trying to share, especially with the newer agents out there, what mistakes to avoid before getting into this business all in. Uh, okay, cool. Let's keep going through here. Bunch of questions here. Just give me a second to uh, pick somewhere to begin. If, I, if a person was just going to cold call a DNC scrubbed consumer list, there would be a ton of leads in Florida. So would you be able to just buy some? Yeah, but nobody has success with that. I haven't ever heard of a single final expense agent that's succeeded in cold calling, selling over the phone. Are they out there? Probably, but 99% of the people that are doing well are buying leads. So why do something out of the ordinary? Just do what works. Don't reinvent the wheel. Uh, what are your thoughts on cold calling a DNC scrubbed consumer list? There we go. Um, if we have leads from previous endeavors, is there a way for us to incorporate them into the CRM? Uh, yeah, you should be able to upload them. Um, but then I would want to go into more protracted conversation about what are the leads? How old are they? Should you just be paying attention to the new stuff? Cause that's where the money's at. Um, so yeah. Uh, getting FEPSA certified. Um, I mean, for final expense, I don't think you need any kind of certification, um, I'm not a big certification guy. I mean, I used to run a personal training gym and, um, you know, there's people that have all sorts of plaques and letters after their name, but it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean that they can help a client lose weight or get in shape. It just makes you sound better. And to me, it's just kind of, um, silly. So I've never been a big certification guy. Um, can you get results and can you show them through testimonials, et cetera? So, uh, but for final expense, your clients are just gonna be like, what? Okay. And ultimately they're going to buy if they like you and what you offer is going to benefit them. So you really don't need that. Cool. All right. How many sales a day do you think an agent would be able to make? So this cold calling question. Zero, Michael. Sorry. <laughs> cold calling. Uh, zero. Uh, calling leads. Yeah, you know, one to five, I would say. Uh, okay. Yes, we do have a CRM for those of you who are asking. The big agency is we, we do have a, a private proprietary CRM uh, that integrates with Kixi. It's, it's excellent. We've been working on it for the past six months. Um, agents, we're about to roll it out to our agency in full. Our freely agents have been using it for a while. Um, okay. Yeah, ttcleads.com, Joe. We like them for sure if you just want to buy leads. For final expense leads, what's your stance on getting into groups? Um, waste of time. Just buy leads, sell over the phone. I mean, you, can you sell? The, I'm not going to say you can't sell, you know, to those groups. But the problem is, <clears throat> excuse me, the problem is, is that the people that are in those groups aren't final expense people. You know, they're more of like a annuities or Medicare type of prospects. I, I just think it's kind of a not a good fit. Um, okay. Coming through these questions here. Ah, it's extended it to 12 months. Okay, thank you for that update. Appreciate that burial insurance quotes. So that must mean we've got till the end of the year before this junk gets out of the system. But I would still operate without it um, and not get those kind of leads for all sorts of other valid reasons. 
like not using your or losing your brain or mind and working them. Um, well, hey, Sunshine Forever, what are the steps to transition out of another job into final expense sales without losing out on income? You know, so um, a couple of things. Um, we don't do part timers in our final expense telesales program. The only reason I'm sharing this with you is that, you know, there's this transition question, right? Like, how do I make the jump without losing money? Well, more agents lose money selling final expense over the phone part time and don't make very much of it um, and never really fully commit. So there's a lot of issues by being, you know, half in. And this is hard for me because I started the business face to face on a part time basis and it worked really well for me. But the data shows otherwise for our telesales agents. So um, really the solution is to go all in. Now, what helps would be like a free lead program like what we offer because at least you don't have to put out money to buy leads. That's a big economic uh, uh, saving thing, right? It's, it's, it's going to save you a good bit of money. Um, whereas if you had to put out three to five grand a month, it might be a totally different conversation, right? And a lot more risky. And the truth is, I think with final expense, you should start to see success within the first couple of weeks of getting started. Uh, and if you don't, this business is probably not for you. Um, so yeah, there is that. There are, there are, I don't know anybody right now that's doing a LOA uh, base type of model where there's like a salary or guaranteed income. Uh, I'll take that back. Um, <clears throat> uh, Dana Neeson does something like that um, where they pay on talk time uh, a, a certain set amount of money. So as long as you put the time in on the phone, uh, you get a little cash. Um, and then when you make some sales, you make money too. So that's a way to if you needed to have assurances you're going to have money, that that may be a better way to get started. So that's another thing to consider. The average annualized premium per sale is $890. Me and uh, Tim and I have been doing a lot of work with doing some number crunching. So that's about 75 bucks, right? Yeah, about $75 a month is about the average, which is great. My average back in the day doing face-to-face was like 45 just to show you the difference. So um, yeah, okay. I get DNC scrubbed age leads. So since these people are not DNC, would you not? Uh, yeah, that all stuff is going to be uh, trash in about six months, 12 months. I just wouldn't do it. Get fresh and exclusive leads. Yes, we'll have it as a recording, Tom. No problem. Uh, can you speak briefly how you see the final expense industry growing in the next five years? Yeah, really easy. More old people, um, more interest as the age of the average baby boomer gets older and less money uh, at retirement. Uh, it should be just as good as it is now. I don't really see anything. There's no government issues that are gonna clog up the final expense burial insurance market. There's always gonna be good carriers out there. Um, you know, the only thing that may happen is the cost to acquire clients goes up. That certainly happened for the direct mail business if you're selling face-to-face. -face. It certainly has happened to some extent with Facebook, but. Um, over the last five to six years. So that's probably the only concern. But if you're writing good business and you're writing good volume, that should, should, shouldn't should really affect things, in my opinion. I don't see it going up so high that it would. <clears throat> Let's see what else. Who do you study uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu with? Uh, Mickey Swafford, Chattanooga jiu-jitsu. Uh, I think he trained under a guy who trained under... Um, crap. What's his name? Not, um, uh, it'll come to me in a minute, but, uh, one, a Brazilian, I know that's pretty specific, right? So, <laughs> uh, yes, uh, all CRMs now are based off of go high level, including ours. It's really the, it's like, it's like how all websites are based off of WordPress. It's like, it's just the chassis that's been really reliable for a lot of custom tailored CRMs. Ours, ours is certainly the same way. What's the average start time for a new agent to start pulling in decent income? I don't know what decent income is, but to me, um, I think you should be making some decent income uh, within your first month to two months. You're going to have a learning period. It's going to take some time to learn the business, right? If you're more risk averse, this is where a free lead program like what we do helps reduce the risk. But um, yeah, uh, this isn't a business that is like rocket surgery. It's, it's simple. It's not easy, but it's simple if you put the time in and, and, and have the leads to call. How quickly can a new agent use alpha leads to get two to three policies sold per day? A uh, month to two months. Same kind of argument there. Yeah. Uh, Full-time 
Uh, free leads, tallow sales, very entry to commission range. Most carriers is like 50% for level. Uh, guaranteed issue is a little less, 45%. Um, and then and those you get fresh and exclusive leads to call them. Okay. Hopefully I covered the live transfer question. Yep, we're here. I know you guys are not big on recruiting or agency building within your organization. What kind of recruiting bonus do you offer agents who do have experience or talented at recruiting? Um, shoot, shoot me a message at davidufour.com forward slash contact. Um, I mean, we're not opposed to people recruiting or building an agency. Um, it just has to be the right way. We're not going to recruit people to recruit people to recruit people. Just because you have a pulse doesn't mean you should be hired in this business. Um, what I think what we've done really well is we've really controlled for the, the quality of the agent coming in and then the quality of the product we give them uh, with training, support, leads, the whole package, right? Um, the MLM process of just recruiting everybody is a failed model. Um, it only works for the people at the top of the pyramid. It doesn't work for the agent most of the time. And there's a lot of money that's lost that you just don't hear about. So I'm particular when it comes to how you recruit and who you recruit, of course. Okay. How about AI taking over sales? You know, Max, I think I think what will ultimately happen is that <clears throat> I think there will be some sort of government intervention to prevent artificial intelligence from actually transacting the sale. Um, and the nice thing about our business, you probably will see that happen in other businesses, but our businesses, you require to have a license. And I think... The powers that be or the agent population really have a problem if somebody issued a license to an artificial intelligence thing, right? So I, I'm I'm not drinking the Kool-Aid on that. I'm not worried about the hype. Um, I think what you'll see is humans will want to protect themselves and their groups from being replaced uh, by, you know, artificial intelligence. And there'll be some kind of legislation put in place. Uh, do you expect that a higher proportion of people choose cremation rather than burial? Yeah, I think that'll change. I think that's already been the case. But that doesn't mean you couldn't use life insurance for other things like money left behind to pay other bills, right? I mean, the fact that our premium size is $75, I would imagine our face amount is probably ten to 12000 So people are still buying more than just 3000 for a Bulger's can cremation, right? Uh, okay. I'm looking at a six by six or eight by eight. Do not do direct mail for telesales. Um, if uh, Pedro Sauer, that's who it is, Adam. Thank you. Um, don't do direct mail for telesales. Too expensive, too high acquisition costs. Just do the two we, we mentioned. All right. What average percent telesales agents say struggle with email? Oh, yeah. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. I think we'll talk about that. So good question. Uh, we do work part-time with agents who want to sell face-to-face. -face. Okay. How many leads do agents get uh, per day under your lead? Yeah, somewhere between 100 and 150 is what we're looking at for the full-time agents in our free lead program every week. Okay. Continuing on here. So some other observations here. This kind of pulls in here with Mike. Is carrier selection is huge. Okay. So doing telesales and guys, we'll get to the uh, script here momentarily. Um you got to have the right carriers, okay? I'm going to tell you what carriers we like, and I'm going to tell you what to avoid. So um, your client, I'm going to, let me show you this. There, there's really no better visual demonstration here. Um, to, you have to understand who your client is in final expense. Um, let me pull this image up because it's, it's just really, it really is demonstrative of what this is. So, um, can you see this on my screen? Nope, that's me. Let me do this. Let me pull off my... Okay, here we go. Boom. Check this out. This right here, ladies and gentlemen, is your client. Meet Mildred. You know, she she's wondering where the blue button is to e-sign her AIG application. You've got $3,000 in commission on the line, and she's about to hang up because she's just so frustrated with, uh, you know... The process. <laughs> the, this is your client, okay? Do not underestimate their ignorance when it comes to technology. Um, so, so this and, and joking aside, this is very serious. Uh, if you are in a position where you're selling products that require electronic signatures via email, you might as well just hang up your saddle and fail, right? It's, it ain't gonna work. Instead, what you need are carriers that have 
text to sign signatures where it's literally, they get it onto their phone. Most clients have smartphones now and just press the link and then um, basically sign it simply. Uh, or a voice signature process where the client doesn't have to actually electronically sign anything. They just do it with voice, okay? So that's what you want to avoid. And likewise, what you want to uh, run to when it comes to carriers. Other things about carriers that you want to understand is you want to use carriers that have instant decisions reliably and consistently, okay? So for example, there are companies out there that they have they look great on paper, great underwriting, prices aren't half bad, but when you go actually apply to get coverage, half the time it gets referred to underwriting or declined. And the thing about telesales that's different from face to face is that you don't get an opportunity a lot of the times to pivot and save the deal, especially if you're losing them half the time with a specific carrier. So instead, you want to pick carriers that have a placement rate, which means you actually write the deal and it gets approved as applied for 80%, 90% plus of the time. I'm going to tell you the carriers that I like that we employ in our agency where we see this happening. And I think y'all need to just do what we say and use the same carriers. The first one is SBLI. SBLI is fantastic. It has a 90% plus placement rate when you apply for coverage. So think about it. Nine out of 10 times, what you're applying for is going to get approved. That's huge. That's out of the ordinary for the vast majority of carriers. There's probably closer to 70% to 80%. Okay. Um, rates are great. That's also important, of course, so you don't get replaced, right? And the text assigned process is, is a breeze. Another carrier we like is Sika. Uh, it shows up as superior choice or citizens if you look on your insurance toolkits tool. Um, it is the niche carrier and really the carrier to have for 2024. Uh, you can get policies or clients covered that have oxygen use, congestive heart failure, dialysis, first day full coverage. They're literally walking out of John Hopkins after cancer is cured. You bum rush them and have them sign an application. They get first day full coverage. I'm serious, okay? Um, and they don't do an MIB or RX check. So that means as long as the client's honest and they answer everything appropriately, it's going to get issued 100% of the time. Again, think about it. You're selling over the phone. You want to work carriers where you can ensure that the client's going to get approved, right? So we love those two carriers. We also like Trinity and Family Benefit. Uh, the telesales uh, voice signature is a little bulky. It takes a little time to get it done. It's definitely the longer of the options, but the prices just beat out everybody. And like we mentioned earlier, our persistency is 93, 94% in the first year. I think placement might be about 75%, a little lower than we want, but we like to use those, especially for healthy people. Okay, because it ain't going to get dropped. So, um, yeah, so we like those carriers and we want you want a lineup of carriers where you know more often than not when you write the deal, it's going to get approved, right? Because think about it. You may have that carrier that pays really well, but half the time it doesn't get approved. Well, really, effectively, your commission is at least half, right? Because half the time the clients may get tired out, not want to pivot or balk at the different change in price because you've had the back pedal, right? So those carriers that decline or get referred to underwriting, they're gonna cause you all sorts of problems financially and are gonna make this business much less appealing. So stay away from those carriers that don't issue the way that they should, right? So that's that's the big thing with carriers, that's who we like. Um, CICA, S-C-I-C-A. Um, not, not a lot of organizations carry it. They're frankly one of the ones that uh, profusely do not want to associate with the MLMs of the world because they write such bad business. They, they only work with smaller organizations like ours that actually care about training agents, making sure that they write appropriate business. I mean, you don't want an MLM organization with agents who don't give a shit to write a carrier that does RX and that doesn't do RX and MIB checks, right? So that's, you know, like somebody said here in the, in the audience, uh, that's risky. It is, Diane. But that's why they work with us because we actually care about only using them when it's appropriate for the client. And so, um, but they're huge. They've been a huge uh, uh, benefit to our team for doing it. Yeah, CICA. That's the one we're talking about. And a few organizations offer them. I'm one of them. Okay. All right, moving on. 
Um, yeah. Oh, another observation here. And this may come as a surprise. It has certainly come as a surprise to me. I have seen, and I believe now, that the vast majority of agents really, 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 in the telesales world, be on a free lead program. I'm shocked that I'm even admitting this or even believing this. But I only do so because of what I've witnessed over the past six months or so of the free lead program that we've run. Um, We have had more consistency with agents who don't have to worry about buying leads and their sales efforts, even at a reduced commission level, than we ever had on agents buying leads. There's something psychological and and demoralizing about buying leads week in, week out. Some some of y'all out there, I'm one of them. I can do it. Uh, but there's a lot of agents out there who are great salespeople, but managing a budget and worrying about, man, I got to drop $1,000 on leads again this week when I didn't make any sales last week. Like that's stressful. Whereas if they don't have that, they just worry about making sales at a lower commission. For a lot of agents, we found in our agency, they're a lot more consistent, a lot more happier, and the kind of doldrums that come around from uh, having to invest your money every week kind of go away. And we've seen more agents who are more consistent. And I've learned to believe and think that probably 90% plus of agents should be on free leads because of that. Which to me, again, I I can't believe it because I'm a diehard broker, buy my own leads, run my own appointments, would never take the lower commission. I want max comp. I'll do all my leads, et cetera. But for most agents, that's just not the case. So for us, and we're not the only game in town that does free leads. Um, I know Peter Roberts does it. Dana Neeson does it. Um, Senior Life Services, Justin Baumijan does it too as well. Um, there's a reason that a lot of people are getting into free leads because the realization is, is that, oh, it's not all rainbows and sunshine for people who buy leads. A lot of people just do best just selling and making sure that they're paid fair. And that's the key thing. Some of these organizations, uh, they don't pay very well. Um, It's not set up necessarily with the agent in mind. Sometimes you're not 100% vested from the first day. Uh, Sometimes you're not getting paid the commission from the carrier, right? There's some weaknesses a lot of the times with free lead programs. So you just got to do your due diligence. But for me, um, yeah, that's really important uh, to keep in mind. Um, Yeah, perfect. Okay, so let's answer some questions here in the chat. And then I'm going to take like a a minute long break to like get some water before we jump into the script, okay? All right. How many leads do agents get? I think I answered that. 100, 150 full-time if they're right in business consistently per week. Um, do you put your clients on drip campaigns to get referrals? Yeah, great question, Arnie. We're actually going to do that internally. That's one of the initiatives we're going to start, which is a campaign to follow up with clients. We're going to automate postcards to go out to our clients. We're going to automate text messages and emails to remind them, hey, it's been six months since you bought from us. Hey, you're turning uh, you know, a year older in X amount of months. Why don't we add some more coverage? Give me a call here. We'll do it for you, right? And hopefully uh, harvest some easy sales that way. Um, one of the things I'll mention here, in all my years of selling in person, and this is true over the phone too, about half the sales I made were people to, who already had coverage in place. And I either added more coverage or replaced the inferior policy with a better one. But the point that, that kind of stuck with me was that, wow, like I wouldn't have made half of these sales if the agent had followed up. It's pretty pretty powerful, right? So the point is, our, all of our clients buy more than just one policy. They may buy just one more, maybe a couple more. But you got to put a process in place in order to get them back on the line or they'll buy from the next person that shows up. So for me, you know, it's, it's a worthwhile investment to follow up with these clients every three months, every six months, and to solicit their businesses. They'll buy from you because they already like and trust you, right? So we're going to initiate something along those lines. And I think that'll be very powerful uh, for the agent and and for the agency and the client too. All right. Yeah, with your telesales program with free leads, do we we call them? Yeah. So you can set calendar appointments, um, but they're they're notorious for no-showing, okay? The best thing to just accept if you're going to sell over the phone is that you're going to have to dial and dial and dial, okay? You're going to have to do the outbound work. Part of the reason that's a benefit is because you get to control the activity much more directly than if you just sit around and wait for hopefully a calendar appointment to show up. And this is an industry-wide issue. It's not a dig agency issue. Somewhere between 25 to 40% of preset appointments based off of Facebook leads actually show up. Now, the ones that show up are pretty good, 
But you can't, in most cases, an agent can't just rely on presets. They're going to have to do their own work to call on these leads and to get them to pick up and then close them. And that's certainly what we do with free lead agents and broker agents too. All right. Do you recommend building a website to generate leads on Google search? Uh, not anymore. Uh, Google is, is incredibly hard to rank on. There's big companies with a lot of money behind them that make, make it almost impossible for the small guy to rank. Uh, I would avoid it. Just buy leads. Uh, what do you feel about telesales versus, uh, versus virtual sales? Yeah, good question, uh, Cone. Uh, we're actually going to address that in the script. There's a part where we use this cool tool. I'm not going to, I'm going to tease you to stick around that actually um, virtualizes the telesales call. And it'll make more sense as we go through the script. And, and we definitely get sales using this tool that we otherwise wouldn't get. So we'll show that to you and make sure that you're in the know so you can use it. All right. How can I get set up to work alongside your agency? DavidDuford.com. Uh, click the FAQ link to learn more. Click apply to apply. And then we also have a Q&A call that you can join daily to ask questions. Everybody here on the call is welcome to do that. All right. At what point, at this point, would you recommend someone choose telesales over face-to-face? Great question. Um, glad you brought it up. Sorry, your question sped past here. Um, Jambi. Yes, I don't have an opinion uh, when it comes to which is better or worse. In fact, both are completely and awesomely viable. The key is what is best for you. Are you comfortable sitting in your room for 50 hours a week dialing and never leaving the house? It's a weird thing when I went remote and, and I've always been remote before remote was cool with my virtual agency. And when you don't go out the house anymore, it's kind of weird. You don't talk to as many people anymore. You're kind of, the walls are kind of coming in. You got the family screaming in the background, right? You know, I got four kids and a wife, so there's a lot of screaming going on. So, you know, that kind of stuff. Can you deal with that? Are you also good on the phone? Some people just don't like the phone, you know? I don't really like the phone. I like talking to people in person. You know, if I had a choice, I'd probably lean face-to-face to some extent, although working at home and doing this for a long time, it's kind of cool too. So um, it just depends on your strengths, John B., and everybody else. So play to your strengths. And, uh, you know, we, we do this in the Q&A call and kind of talk and walk through this. But you, you want to see where you fit best. But don't feel di- discouraged from doing, say, face-to-face if, if that's your strength. But, but don't do it because you think it's not viable. It is. There's less agents selling face-to-face than there were in the past, I think, because the trend now is clearly with telesales. So do what you think your strength is. Uh, no, free leads is not a hybrid. Uh, we don't do a W-2. Uh, we have no, uh, we don't like make people show up to our trainings. We don't make people work our leads. Of course, we won't give you leads if you don't show up and don't work them. But it is not a W-2. It's full 1099. Uh, can we choose the states we want? No. Uh, we have a set number of states that are, are um, programmed for the alpha leads, for free leads, or, or buying your own. Well, you can buy your own or do your own, but we highly recommend you follow our, our lead on which states are best. Uh, but if you've already got a bunch and you're buying your own leads, could probably work with you. Cold calling still working for you? Great, time. Does your commission go up with free leads? Um, you know, we I, I have to assess that, honestly. We don't have a commission increase process for the free lead program. That may be something we look at in the future. <clears throat> and if you sell your own, do you still lose commission even if you're not using the lead program? Uh, if you sell on your own, do you still... Uh, I don't understand the question. Reframe it, please. Oh, is a bridge from W-2 to 1099. Yes. Somewhat, yeah. Yeah, it's not It's not a base salary. It's, it's still a straight commission, but with much less risk than buying your own, for sure. Thanks, Anthea. Appreciate it. Uh, who pays chargebacks and free lead program? You do. So you are responsible for your chargeback. So in our uh, iteration, uh, you're getting paid a large commission, 50%, um, fresh and exclusive leads from the carrier. So you're responsible if you sell a bad policy or you're responsible to save the business. If you don't like that approach, then there are organizations that you can go to and they won't do chargebacks, but there's no such thing as a free lunch, right? And I don't know if you're making it a point or just asking, but it's something to consider either way. Um, there, are, there are organizations out there, they'll pay you 
100 $150 an app and you won't have chargebacks, but you'll never make real money and good money um, on those structures, in my opinion, um, that you could if you were on a, a commission. So it's, it's kind of the same argument like, hey, you could go broker and uh, make more money. Well, this is a little different in the sense that in either way you're getting free leads. Which way is going to maximize your comp better if all else is equal? Carrying the risk of chargebacks or not? My opinion is, you know, if you carry the risk, you should have higher commission, which ultimately will be the case. All right? No, we don't do a contract. You just come in and work with us. If it doesn't work, we'll release it. Pretty straightforward. Hey, Jen. No, I'm not sure if this was asked. With free leads, do agents keep their book of business? Yes, they do. Yeah, you're, you own your book of business. There's no limit of time in the free lead program. They want you to go full bore as soon as you can. Yep. Lots of questions. Here we go. Can you call from a cell phone or is it... Uh, you can, but then just use the dialer we recommend. Uh, it's really the better strategy to make sure your, your connection rates stay high. If we start on career, are commissions or renewals set at the lower comp even when... You, no. The, if you move the broker which you can in our setup from free leads to broker, your comp and renewals will increase. However, and I've seen this with other organizations, strategically, it's probably better that you stay free leads. Um, The psychology of agents change when they go from not buying leads to buying leads. It's the same people, it's the same processes, but now you're responsible for the full risk, granted your commission's higher. And and I've talked to others and heard of others in the, in, in the business and in the industry say the same thing. Like, we'll let agents go fr- from free leads to buying their own, but a lot of them flunk out because it's, it's just too much of an added burden they underestimated. So we'll tell you what we think you should do, but you can ultimately decide for yourself. Commissions are 50% for level, for most level products, 45% for guaranteed edition. Pay, payable by the company, 100% best from the first day. Following up on the appointment mention, what's your opinion on trying to make all the initial calls the appointment setting call. <clears throat> uh, one call close, Mike. This is not a callback business. This is a one call close business. Uh, how do you feel about Medicare telesales? Um, annual uh, open enrollment, you like right now? I think it's great. I've kind of put a pause on recruiting for Medicare until we figure out what CMS is going to do with the override situation and how agents are going to get paid as well as the FMOs. Um, it's kind of like a wait and see what's the rules going to mean How's it going to impact compensation? That's going to impact how FMOs and IMOs structure their programs to assist agents. So for me, I'm like, it, it still works. It works well. But how we're going to structure it is just going to depend on what ultimately happens with CMS. Uh, what's next for agents trying to join your agency? I've attended a Q&A with JD. Um, yeah, apply and interview. And then if we like you, we'll invite you uh, is ultimately the outcome. Is hybrid between face-to-face and telesales an option? No, it's not because if you do telesales, you're working leads in 10 states, right? You're, but, so if you live in Tennessee like me, you're probably not going to travel to Arizona to close the deal. So, and the other thing too is it's just two different skill sets. And if you want to get good at anything in life, you have to focus. And if it's different, you know, spreading your attention between two is going to make you less effective. So we want you to pick your poison and go all in. All in telesales, all in face-to-face. Uh, is making calls later in the day, like after work, sweet spot. Yeah, yeah. Anytime the sun is up, uh, it's time to sell, even when it's down. I mean, we've had agents close business at 11 o'clock at night, right? I mean, you know, don't be, you can sell this at any time and probably two o'clock or later in the afternoon is prime time. If you're part of the free lead program, are you, are you going to expenses? If you're a part of the free lead program, what are the ongoing expenses? Um, None. You just have to buy the licenses for the 10 states, about $800, $900. That's it otherwise. After how long can I switch from free leads to buy my own leads? Uh, I don't know. It just depends on the agent. Um, It really does. I'm not going to give you a specific time. I mean, you will see when you're doing this, you might be hesitant to make the switch because you're making really good money and uh, you never fix what's not broken. If you sell off hours... Do you get full commission or all sales through dig reduced commission? Uh, yeah, you're on the you're on free leads flat out, right? And you really sh- and if you're going to do the free lead program, it's all encompassing. You're going to be all in, right? Or t- or telesales brokering buying your own leads, right? 
So, um, but yeah, there's not like, here's the carrier that's at X commission that's higher and here's the other ones. If I'm on the free lead program and end up getting my own leads, is my commission, yeah, it's still 50%. Again, the only reason you would do the free lead program is because you want free leads. Um, if you want to do your own thing, you would be a broker, buy your own leads. Uh, your comp will be 50% as long as you're in free leads, career path, correct. Can you do telesales and face-to-face? -face? Uh, address that. I am at the FMO, I am a level. Um, probably two or three, I would think. All Most organizations have an upline unless you're just like an Amera life or one life. Even those guys have uplines. Sometimes they run an upline to integrity or something, right? So yeah, we, we have a few. The key thing is, what's the relationship between you and the agent? Um, what is the value you're going to get out of it? Um, a lot of, you know, having an upline above the upline is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, what you should be concerned about is like, what value do you get with the relationship you're with, right? Uh, if you leave the program on good standing, can you come back? Um, yeah, I guess so. Why would you leave? There's the question, but yeah. Uh, Richard Walker, is final expense best type of insurance? I think it is. I mean, think about it. One call close, you, you sell the deal over the phone and one sales presentation. There's no uh, extensive underwriting for weeks on end. Uh, there's millions of prospects. It's easy to get leads. And it's really a salesman-oriented product. It's not a technical product that takes a long time to learn either. So it's really a good mix of everything. It's a great place to start in this business. Some people stay here. Some people move into other products, right? But I think it's a great product to start with. Can you work the free lead program two to three days a week? Nope. You got to be full-time. Full-time to us is 40 plus hours. Uh, what is your minimum activity level required for free lead? 40 plus hours. Is really good money 80000 to you or higher? I mean, I guess. What kind of question is that? I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, do you have a mortgage? Do you have kids? Like, I, if I was, you know, a single bro and I was making eighty grand a year, hell, that's good. You know, if I had lived in my apartment, I was happy with my life, didn't have any balls and chains to worry about like kids and a wife, you know, hey, hey. But 80000 to me now with kids and private school and a mortgage and cars, hell, that's no good for me. <laughs> so it just, it just varies. It depends, right? Uh, 2 p.m. to 11 p.m. Yeah, sure. You can call whenever you want to. That time-wise would work, though. Do you receive renewal lifetime commissions with your programs? Um, most of the carriers have a small renewal on the free lead program. Now, if you buy your own leads, the renewals are 3 to 8%, depending on the carrier. Um, but they definitely are smaller for the free lead program, for sure. My FMO is 360 Financial Group, um, with which I have an equity stake in. They're not really involved in the day-to-day -day operation of what we do, except for contracting. Um, they probably upline with One Life, Mara Life for certain products. It just depends. But they're not involved in the operational capacity. Okay, cool. All right. So we're an hour in. We've covered most of the um, most of the high notes here. What kind of annual income are your free lead agents making? I don't know. We haven't done it annually, so I can't attest to that. I can say as far as the business they're writing, we're seeing 15000 to 20000 in in annualized premium a month, which if you cut that in half is probably seventy five to 10000 a month. But realistically, it's probably when you take for chargebacks, five to eight, kind of somewhere in that range, I think is it would be an honest representation of what to expect at those ranges, right? And again, no costs other than getting non-resident leads uh, or licenses. Uh, they just got to work fresh and exclusive leads. So I think that's pretty good. Cool. Okay, so uh, El Jefe has to get a drink of water. Uh, nothing else besides that. And then we're going to dive into the script. So uh, I've been uh, uh, talking script here for a while, and we're going to do it. But let me take a quick uh, commercial, not a commercial break, just a quick break. I'm going to mute myself, and then I will be back. And then we're going to show the script on screen um, and go through it. Uh, it's changed a lot if you've watched my past videos. It's a lot more um, to the point. We've done away with a lot of the redundancy and the uh, excess, thanks to Tim Hildebrand, our telesales trainer and the team. And uh, I think uh, it's great. 
So, uh, and I'm glad to share it with you. So sit tight. I'll be right back. I'm just going to mute this. Uh, you'll see me disappear off the screen, but I will be right back in just a minute.
And that's how you make a million dollars selling insurance. <laughs> Did y'all get all that? <laughs> all right. Okay, greetings and salutations. Welcome back again. Uh, we're at the second half of today's uh, deep dive on final expense telesales trading. Uh, now we get to actually jump into the script. So I hope you enjoyed the opening there and covering some of the uh, more important parts of uh, how to do this business and um, how to be successful, how to avoid the mistakes. And uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> thanks Richard. <laughs> The mute button, you know, hey, it's too bad you guys missed it. All right. So before we do that, uh, yes, uh, by the way, we're going to have the script on uh, insurance, uh, daviddufour.com forward slash ISS on our insurance sales success free training site. If you go there, I'll upload the script after we're done. Just, just go ahead and go there and register for the account right now, right? Uh, training is the same regardless if it's free leads or a uh, broker. Uh, the script is not there, but it will be. Um, how, can you make enough on free leads to fund a family and decent sized mortgage, say at least 2000 I don't know your personal expenses hybrid, but I think if you can write twenty to 30000 a month, possibly. I don't like those money kind of questions because there's too much detail to, you know, honestly answer. All right. Cool. Okay. So... Let's go ahead and do a change here. We're gonna go over to the script and I'm going to walk you through it. So, um, and I've got some notes here to really hit on the big stuff here. So uh, let me do some magic here and lower the size of my screen so that you can see the script. Let me zoom in a little bit here. Let me get this set up correctly, so just bear with me. Uh, okay, perfect. I think this will be readable. So I'm going to close that. And uh, can you guys see the screen with the script? Uh, I assume so. Just throw something in the chat. Uh, I think we're good. Um, okay. Cool. All right. So before we get into the script, this is, again, markedly different. Let me make sure it looks good on my end. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay. So it's markedly different than what we've done in the past. We've consolidated the script probably, we've cut it down by a third to a half. And there's some reasons why we've done this with telesales and, and I'll hearken back to what we talked about. The, the number one thing here that I wanna talk about is um, keeping the people on the phone. That really is the main thing of what we're trying to do here. Okay, here we go. And and the problem with telesales that you can run into is that people are much less patient on the phone than they are in person. So for example, if you do too much rapport building, if you take too much time to explain something or take too much time to go into too much depth, the attention span of the client is a lot less than it used to be. And you'll likely lose their interest and they'll likely pull away and you'll have more difficulty uh, converting that person into a sale. So one of the things you're going to see on here is a lot of talk about keeping the client and hooking them in uh, on the phone. So we'll go through that and I'll indicate where, where that is. And we especially use the term price quote you requested because that's what a lot of people are obviously interested in. That's why they request the information. So we're using these keywords uh, multiple times even though we're not even showing them the price until the end still, of course, uh, but to keep their interest engaged. Okay, um, there's a term we quote fast, but we sell slow. We'll go over that in a minute and how that works. And um, so, yeah, let's jump in. So again, one thing to clarify here as we go through, and again, let me just check the chat, make sure we're on, on board here. I think we are, so uh, very good. So cool, okay. So the big thing here with the script is that um, <clears throat> we're getting to the point a lot faster. And this is also an outbound script. This is not what we're doing if they're if we're doing uh, an inbound script. Again, most of you out there, maybe you're wondering, well, what if I do live transfers or I do TV leads? Uh, if you're doing that already, just keep doing this. This is specifically for an outbound setting. Okay, so most of what most agents do is an outbound strategy. So we want to make sure that um, we're set up to uh, accommodate for that, and that's what the script is going to do. So let's jump right into it. So this is ring ring. They say hello. Here is the script. 
And this is the opening, and we'll talk a little bit about why it's this way and, and, and the thought process behind it. Hey, David, this is David Duford calling you on a recorded line with the final expense price quote you request on Facebook. I literally just saved a guy $43 a month. It's just a few minutes. Is this for yourself or a loved one? So a couple of things that we change with the opening here, okay? So calling you on a recorded line, that just allows us to record the call and then for us to review the call just to keep it for compliance purposes. So that's why that's there. We say final expense quote you request on Facebook because that's what they did. Our leads at the at the dig agency with alpha leads are high intent. The people who request the information know it's about final expense and they know they did it on Facebook. So we use both of those references in the actual Facebook ad, okay? I literally just saved the guy $43 a month. It's just a few minutes. Is this for yourself or a loved one? The reason we talk about saving people money is because what we found is a lot of our clients already have a policy. They already bought from someone and then they requested more information somewhere else. So a lot of our sales that we're getting are coming from price or policy replacements. And also to even to somebody who doesn't have a policy, the fact that you save them a lot of money uh, is an intriguing thing. Think of the Geico ads that are out there. You can save 15% a month. That's been the tagline they've used forever and ever. So obviously there's some interest in people who want to buy life insurance or insurance to save money. So we're playing into that. We're obviously selling the appointment here. It's just a few minutes. Is this for yourself or a loved one? So that's the first question we ask. And of course, this question that we're asking, we're not asking them, hey, uh, does that sound good to you? Or hey, um, are you interested in this? That facilitates a yes, no question. And what do we know about when we ask a yes, no question? What's the client going to say? No, no, I don't want to be on a sales call. So when you ask something like, is this for yourself or a loved one? It is a yes, yes question. Yes, this is for myself or yes, this is for a loved one. And then the next question being, are you a smoker or a non-smoker? And again, that gives us a little bit more information and the ability for them to say yes to something and not say no. Perfect. It's my job to deliver the quote over the phone about the final expense programs. And then we go to the initial questions. Okay. So there's a section we'll get to after this. Um, but this is the opening. Now there's a couple of things that can happen to the opening uh, that you need to be aware of. And there's some objections that can happen. Okay. And we've gotten it uh, worked down to having two different objections. The one objection that we hear a lot is I already have insurance. Okay. And the way that you get this on the phone is, oh, no, 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 I've already got a policy. I already took care of this. I'm already fine. You get people who are kind of, they're just like, hey, I've already done this. I'm not interested. And they're looking to hang up the phone on you. Okay. So the way that we've successfully turned those around is we do more of an interruptive type of pattern. So, and we raise our voice. So as they're saying, hey, I've already got insurance. I'm already fine. You interrupt the midstream and say, hey, great. That's exactly why I'm calling. Stay on the line. I literally just saved a guy $43 a month. Let me do that for you as well. It's just a few minutes. Are you a smoker or are you a non-smoker? So when we interrupt them, what we're trying to do is we're trying to hook them to the, the concept that hooked them in the ad, which is fine. they obviously request the information. If they got a policy, they're probably interested to see what else is out there and possibly saving money. So that's why we're saying we're interrupting them because if we let them complete their thought, there's a hangup potential. Whereas if we interrupt them, and it sounds like rude, but it really isn't, we're now taking back control before they hang up on us and we tell them to stay on the line and we reiterate the point that we just saved a guy $43 a month. Let me do that for you as well. And we go back to asking that yes, yes question, getting into the uh, details of what the client's situation is. Does that make sense? Again, this is for people who have insurance, okay? We're not, if we're not, inter if we're not interrupting them and getting control of the conversation, we're losing out on this potential to replace their existing policy and get them a better deal. And that's great for us because we have carriers that accept usually issues that are guaranteed issue like oxygen use, dialysis, congestive heart failure, recent cancer cured, right? And, and we want them to stay on the line with us. So this is a tactic we use successfully to keep those people with existing coverage on the line to help them get something better. For any other objection like, hey, I'm busy right now, think of any kind of normal objection, we go into our standard objection rebuttal strategy. Hey, yeah, no problem. I just need a few minutes to get you the pricing you wanted. 
what you do with it's totally up to you. I'm not going to try to sell anything. I just want to get you the quote, right? We talk about, we're going to get you the quote. We're going to get you, you requested the quote. So we're going to, we, we're just getting you the quote. We're not going to sell your policy. So how long have you been looking? Okay, so that gets us into some of the pre-qualifying questions that we have and gets us further along the lines of building some value, all right? So let me go over to the uh, screen here and see if there are any questions. So I'm just going to pop back on um, the screen here and see if anybody has any questions about the beginning parts of the script. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Kixie, K-I-X-I-E. Any questions with the script so far? Feel free to throw them in the chat. I'll give you like 30 seconds to do so. Uh, if you wanted to switch to the Freely program, if you're already contracted with us, shoot me an email and then I'll get you in connection with what we need to do to make it happen. Okay. Any questions on the script so far? Just giving you guys a, a second to ask if you have any. Okay, I'm going to go back. And if you throw your question in there and I miss it, I'll, I promise I'll come back to it. Okay, let me go back to the screen here. Lower this back down. Awesome. Okay. So uh, again, from here on the script, if they've got insurance and we hook them with the quote to save them money, then we're going to go right down to the underwriting section. So believe it or not, we just start asking them questions on their health. We get their age, what's their health, um, uh, and to go line by line on the script, we say, okay, so let's get you the price quote here real quick. There's that hook we're trying to keep them engaged with. We're going to get you the quote, right? We don't want them to hang up. We just got to keep them on the phone to the end of the call. It's all based on age and health. So what's your date of birth? And so I can verify your age. Remember, price quote is based off of the age and health. So do you have any mild or major health concerns of any kind? So from here, if they say they're as fit as a fiddle and they don't have any health issues, we'll talk about it in a little bit. We just get their uh, height and weight if we haven't already. We also get uh, smoking, non-smoking if we didn't already get that. And then their prescriptions that they use, which if they're healthy, they're probably not going to have very many. And that's the health underwriting we do for somebody who is in good shape. Now, if they say they've got issues, we go through a litany of things. We'll get to that in a minute. I don't want to get too ahead of, of, of schedule here because we've got to go back and cover what they say um, if, they're, if they're just nice and they don't have any objections or if they continue uh, the process uh, after some sort of other objection besides having insurance. So what happens here is that uh, we ask, uh, so how long you've been looking for coverage? And then uh, do you currently have anything in place, yes or no? Okay. And again, there's two different word tracks here because what we're trying to do is figure out if they don't have a policy, then we need to spend some time building value. We need to spend some time figuring out what the reason why is, what they want to accomplish, et cetera. So that's, that's the right side of the screen that you see here. Let me scroll down a little bit so you can see it better. If the policy, if they have no policy, we go into this section. If they have a policy, then we go into the process of building, uh, of collecting information of what their current policy is. Again, the idea here is if they have a policy, let's see if we get them something better, okay? So again, to go through this, if they have a policy, what we're gonna say is, okay, so you're, were you looking for some additional coverage or to see if you qualify for a lower monthly payment or both? Again, we're gonna see that they wanna add more, save money, get more coverage. What's their, what's their kind of their reason why they want, or they're talking to us and why they requested this? Perfect, well, definitely, well, you're definitely in the right place. Just last week, I had a client say the same thing. I was able to save them $43 a month. Let's cut to the chase and get this done for you. Again, kind of, we want to emphasize on the phone again, we're going to do this. We're going to take care of this, right? We're getting, we're moving on. We're hooking them in by saying this. And by the way, was your policy a two-year wait to kick in? And was there accidental coverage with that? Okay, got it. So again, we're collecting this information so we can better position what we're going to sell them if in fact they have a two-year waiting period product or they had accidental added to it, which can make the policy sound better than it is, okay? Now, if the person says they don't have a policy, then we go down the second word track on the right. And again, we have to emphasize the tonality, the performance side, and amazed quieter tone sounds something like this. Wow, well, is there any specific reason why you haven't got something in place? And, and they'll kind of talk there and then say, well, what's been holding you back from getting a policy? And this kind of tells you what their why is, what they're looking to do, what they're looking to accomplish. And then you engage in whatever conversation happens here, take notes. Usually what they do is talk about their experience with death, 
uh, you know, why it's important that they have a policy, what they've experienced with other people who've had policies or who haven't, right? And this kind of helps you build the case of why they need to buy from you today, all right? And then from either section here, we go down to the underwriting section where we left off and then collect their information. And then before I go any further, again, I told you the script's going by pretty quickly, much, much more different than the last, the old ones. Let me go back to the screen here. We're gonna um, switch over here and see if you guys have questions so far. Um, is replacement a tough process? It can be. Um, but then if you can show them a better value, whether it's, it's either, you're either going to save them money or get them more coverage for the same price, or you're going to take them out of a two-year waiting period product and put them into a first day full coverage product. So if you can demonstrate the value, what I've seen is even mediocre agents who can, who can show a difference are going to get the sale eight out of 10 times. This is part of the reason why I'm not a fan at all of a one product sale approach. So like a Lincoln Heritage or a Senior Life, if you're just selling with one product, the problem you're going to run into in this business is that that person's gonna to talk to another agent in 90 days. And if you're selling a product simply on price, and this is why I think you should, if you sell for those companies, you should absolutely sell the Funeral Consumer Guardian Society product or the Legacy Assurance product with Senior Life. Because if you don't, you're now in a uh, commodity business and your commodity, a whole life product, uh, may not be the same in, pro in, in, in price and coverage value than mine, of which I have multiple products to choose from and sell to. Does that make sense? So um, I'm not a big fan of one product approaches. And in my experience, most agents don't sell the sizzle, the Funeral Consumer Guardian Society, the Legacy Assurance like they should, making it an easier replacement process for the rest of us that sell multiple products. So uh, yeah, I, I don't think it's tough. Uh, I think it can be tough if you don't have multiple options. Uh, do the alpha lead prospects go through any qualifying answers to indicate level of intent? Um, uh, I don't think so. I think the lead itself is pretty direct on what, what they would even do to request information. Uh, but we have agents converting you know, upwards of 10% of the lead. So for every 100, they sell 10 policies. And that's really good results as a conversion rate. Anything 5% and over, I consider is really good. Are there other carriers you want us to use besides SBLI, Seeker, Trinity? AIG is a good one um, for guaranteed issue, as long as the client can do e-signatures. Um, there's some other ones too in the mix, but those are the core ones. Um, uh, shoot me an email, William. Okay, let's keep going and go back to the screen on the script. So as we get to underwriting, this is where we throw in that we introduce ourselves, right? Usually we did the introduction earlier. The reason this was moved a little bit later is to progress the process of the presentation a little bit faster so that you don't have to go through all these niceties and formalities and then lose people's interest and hang up on you along the way. So we stick the introduction in here and, and this may be a couple of minutes in max, right? So it's not like you have to wait long to do it. But the introduction sounds like this. Oh, by the way, uh, if you missed it, my name is David DuFord. Obviously, I'm a licensed broker here in California. I shop all the 30 plus major insurance companies to get you qualified for the lowest monthly price. And the lowest monthly price is my absolute obsession for you. Sound good? So again, we emphasize like we want to get them the best price. That's what everybody likes to hear. Okay. And when we go back and we ask the health questions, and if they say I'm as fit as a fiddle, uh, we, um, we go into, oh, let me make sure I'm, I'm right here. Um, we'll ask them this que these questions, get them prescriptions, major questions. So if they don't have any health issues, we get their height, weight, prescriptions, and then proceed to the payment question. If they have health issues, we get their payment information, and then we do a protracted health information collection here, okay, including asking for the prescriptions, okay? Again, the idea behind this, again, is that speed process to get to the presentation, to get to the bottom line, and then work on selling it after we present a price. So with this process, we only do this if they've mentioned they've got health. And we'll go through each of these to make sure that we're thorough with the issues they've presented to us. If they say they're as fit as a fiddle, um, we trust them. But understand, if we ask them about the prescriptions, that's going to be a leading indicator if there is problems. So if you're wondering, like, what if our client lies? 
well, as we go through the prescription collection, we'll be able to qualify. So what? So you take this prescription, why do you take it, right? And then you can dig a little bit to see if there actually were some issues, okay? So again, two different tracks depending on the health of the client. And the goal here is to speed the presentation along so we're not just mired down in, in, in issues and, and redundancy that is unnecessary. Payment question. Um, put in underwriting software before picking carrier again. We, we, we're going to go through the health questions. We use insurance toolkits, great toolkit to pr uh, great tool to price and underwrite our clients. Uh, that's where we're using it at this point um, as we look for the payment question. Uh, and then of course, if, if they're fit and the prescriptions check out, we don't necessarily need to do underwriting. We just run prices using insurance toolkit. So the payment question, uh, sounds like this. Some carriers take certain payment methods, others do not. So do you have a valid U.S. bank account? The reason we do this is, um, uh, again, we want to know if our client has a bank account or if not, what type of payment card to use, like a debit card, right? Um, and then figure out what to do from there. Uh, like a Prosperity is great for taking Direct Express, common uh, bankless or checklist checking account to use if they don't have a normal bank account, okay? And we gotta know what kind of account they use in order to figure out which carrier we're going to use. So that's critical, okay? And then once we're done here, uh, we go down to shopping the price around. So we're gonna now look for the price range for the client. Now, if the client originally said something earlier on, let's say they already had a policy in place and they said something like, yeah, I'm paying a hundred bucks for this policy. It's a little too much. What can you do for me? Well, we know what their upper budget is, right? So we don't need to necessarily ask for the price range that they're comfortable with. We just need to show them something that's demonstrably better, whether that's the same price with more coverage or a lower price with more coverage, right? Or a lower price with the same coverage, right? So we can skip the shopping price section here if we already have collected this information. So the script, we don't need to go through the budgeting question if they've given this to this. But if they haven't, and let's say they don't have a policy and they haven't indicated their price comfortability or comfort level, and this is where we would say what we would say following uh, as such. So Mildred, everyone I work for is on a fixed income. So the goal is to find you something that you can qualify for and also afford. We wait there to say, yeah, that makes sense, right? Uh, they have programs sorted in different price ranges. So I need you to tell me what range to start shopping in. So we let them tell them in this case uh, what range they're comfortable with, okay? So uh, if they say something like, well, I'm pretty tight on price, then we'll go to this word track on the right. It says, I know you had some price concerns already. And this next question is just so I know where you, I should start shopping for you. So should I start shopping in a range between 80 and 100? And then we'll move down if they don't give us 100% yes. So they have to say, yes, 100% I can afford 80 to 100, 100 bucks for me to accept that. If they say something like, well, maybe, or not until I pay off my washer and dryer, then we'll lower it down to 60 to 80, 40 to 60, and go down as low as we can until they say yes, okay? We also like to say, oh, wow, I imagine you don't want this crazy policy at $400 a month. Let's skip that one. That shows them it's called a price anchor and it shows them how bad it could be. So everything that we're about to show them, you know, 100 to 150 or 80 to 100 sounds a lot better and a lot less expensive relative to the 400. Does that make sense? So when we don't know their price or they don't give us any indication, this is the script that we use. This is the classic premium sell. So now, now this is just so I know where to start shopping policies for you. So should I start shopping in the range between 100 and 150 a month? So that we start a little bit higher there if they have an express price sensitivity. And uh, then we lower it down in the same manner as before in order to find something they're comfortable with. Again, the idea here is that um, uh, we don't want them to hang up, right? So if they've expressed price sensitivity and I showed them something at 100, 150, the fear is they'll hang up on us, right? So again, depending on what they say, we have two different word tracks uh, in order to accommodate them. And also, if they've already mentioned the pricing and you know what you're dealing with and what you have to beat, then you can skip the section entirely, okay? Okay, so let's go back, uh, take a moment here, and then let's talk to you guys, see if you guys got any questions here. Um, yes, uh, AD, if you go to, uh, I'll put it in the chat again, daviddeford.com forward slash ISS. I'm going to put the script in there and I'm going to post the script in the form after I'm done with the training today. Okay. And then, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, yeah, so you guys can download it and work with it and do what you want. 
What is your preferred call cadence for those who don't, don't answer? For example, triple dial each lead every day for five days straight. Um, yeah, I mean, call them as many, many times a day as possible. Uh, I don't think there's a limit. Uh, if you use Kixie Dialer, uh, they'll rotate out numbers for you, right? So that increases call connection rates because it's the same number calling 10 times in a row. People are going to be like, yeah, it's probably a sales proof, right? But uh, I don't believe like you should, well, should you wait three days or five days for a call again? No, just call them until they pick up the phone, right? Because behind that phone number is somebody who's going to buy from you, right? So keep going. All right, cool. By the way, you guys enjoying the script so far and enjoying the training? If you do enjoy it, do me a favor, smash the like button. That helps spread this to the YouTube algorithm so other final expense agents like you can see this who desperately need to that don't get any good training. So thank you so much for watching, guys. And again, if you guys have questions, throw them in the chat. I'd be happy to address them. Okay. Now going back here, we're going to go back and continue with the script. Getting through it pretty quickly here. And then um, let's see what else here. So how much coverage are you looking to get? We do ask them kind of what they have in mind that they'd like to have. Most people have an idea of what sounds good if, you, if they haven't told you by now. And then at this point, we ask them to get a, uh, go get something to write these price quotes down with pen and paper. So we want them to write the price down. It gets them engaged in the sales process. It also, we mentioned we're going to show them the price quotes, so they're getting ready to get the information. And this is the point where we talk about the why and the problem, okay? Again, this is for people who don't have coverage. So we want to make sure uh, that we uh, they understand the why and the problem. If they already have a policy, the way that we're addressing that is that, hey, we just assume, hey, you know why you have this. You understand your reason why. Uh, the reason why you're buying from me is to get a better deal. But the in, in the incumbent, you know, do you want this to, do you think it's important to have life insurance stuff? Like that's all been taken care of. So we're not wasting our precious time over the phone reminding them of that and we're assuming they already know that. But for the people without coverage, we want to build some value, okay? So script goes as follows. Perfect. So while you're doing that, can you describe for me what your thoughts, concerns were that caused you to want to go get this amount of coverage? Who are you trying to protect it, okay? If they don't say they have a reason or they're just getting old and, you know, uh, you're not getting any younger, you say the first reason is, I understand that, Mrs. Jones, and what has happened. so what has happened in your life that has made you decide now is the time to seriously look at getting a plan in place. The second one is if, if they say it again, the last try would be uh, try one last time, move on to after this to get the price. Well, so usually it's one of three reasons. Mrs. Jones, either it's someone's passed away recently, someone has had a health recent health scare, or someone's had an accident. Which one is it for you? So here we're trying to feed them some reasons as what their why may be. Okay. <clears throat> again, to connect the reason why with why they should have a policy. All right. So moving on. Uh, so uh, Mildred, if you, if you do not get a policy, who is going to get stuck with the bill? Again, we wait here and pause. And are they going to be the beneficiary? And then how on earth is the beneficiary, uh, Sally, going to even pay for this, right? And you want to say that in a tonality that's kind of shocked and, and in awe. Like, how would they pay for this, right? And we do this, again, to, to build some fear into this. Like, if you don't take care of this, let's walk through mentally what's going to happen to that client. Uh, when they die and that beneficiary now has to come up with money they don't have. If they don't know um, what's going to happen uh, and they don't they really uh, talk about it, uh, the follow-up here is, do you think they'd have to get a loan to pay for it? If it's an answer to the yes to the loan, we say, well, maybe they could, but wait, what's their credit score? They'd have to get great credit to get a loan in 24 hours, you know? Um, how would you feel if they had a $500 a month loan payment over the next their heads for the next 10 years? So the idea here is to kind of conceptualize the pain and the actuality of them being able to even get a loan. And then if they have somebody who could pay, what we say to that is, that's great to know, but do you really want them paying out all this money to bury you? How would that make you feel if they had to fork over all that money? Again, we're trying to get them to feel shameful for having to spread this burden to somebody else who probably would it would be unexpected to them and may not even be able to do it at the time. And do they really want to put that burden on them? Again, why do we say all this and why are we doing this? Because we're trying to make an impact into the, the prospect's mind that um, you got to buy this stuff. And if you don't, there's serious problems that are going to come from this. Okay. Um, how would you feel? Other things that we ask in this section. How would you feel if Sally had to struggle to pay your funeral costs because he put the decision off again? 
Mildred, you need to make a decision to change something here. This is a problem we can fix. And then we do an empathy summarize uh, and summary, and we summarize everything they said. So what I'm hearing here is that you need to get a policy because you're worried that Sally is not going to have the money, and you'd hate to leave it behind. You'd feel full of shame. Is this why you need to get this done? Okay. And again, this section is for people who don't have a policy. We would skip all this if they did. And then we move down here. So at this point, product value differentiation and underwriting. Okay, so here's the price. Again, hooking the back end. I just want to make sure we choose the right product for you. Do you know the difference between term life and whole life? Term terminates. Yeah, whole life lasts your whole life. And again, with our policy, your coverage never cancels and the monthly payment never goes up with this product, right? So again, we've really truncated the description of what it is that we do to get the point across quickly to the client and not to waste precious time to lose the attention of the prospect. Now it's at this point where then we go into what kind of option we can get with the client. If they're a level policy, first day full coverage or health qualifies for it, then what we say is this. So after I do this application for you, you should qualify for level first day coverage. That means absolutely zero wait time, no two year wait. From the date of your first payment, you're 100% fully covered for the full amount. And I'll tell you the amount here in just a second. Again, hooking them back in. If they're a GI or two year wait, what we say, so after I do this application for you, you should qualify for one of our most popular plans. If you die in the first two years, your family gets all of your money back plus 10%. So it's like the best savings account you ever had. At the final day of your two years, they get the full coverage amount if you die for any reason. It's really a blessing to have this kind of coverage when you have COPD, Alzheimer, cancer, and everything else under the uh, sun, right? So this is us selling the product and the benefits of how it works. So let me take a little break here to see if you guys have questions about the script so far, if there's anything that I can qualify or explain a little bit more. <clears throat> All right. You're welcome, Lisa. Thank you very much. Yeah, definitely to the point. The good old back the hearse up against it. We're definitely hearse backing against the door. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're getting to the... But this is a lot faster for those of you who've been around. I mean, like, this thing goes. This thing... I mean, we're, we're flying through this. Uh, and, and again, we're not leaving any detail out. I think we're hitting the detail. You can see it, but you can see how we're progressing quickly through the beginning of the call. And that's really the, bit, the main thing I think that's most important is we don't want to lose these prospects before it's too late, especially the ones that have bad policies that we can get better policies for, right? And that's the genius, I think, of Tim's iteration of this script is it helps us do just that. All right, so uh, if you guys got questions, throw them in the chat. Let's continue to move along here. I'm gonna pull back the script. Okay, so you guys remember where I mentioned um, how to virtualize your telesales call. So here's a little pro tip for you guys to use uh, doing telesales that we've seen some really good results from. So I'm gonna reveal that right now in the script. So uh, have any of you all heard of Crank Wheel? So Crank Wheel is a way to get your uh, a video of you sent to the client live like a live stream just like you're watching me right now without the client having to set up anything or the client needing to be on camera his or herself the beauty of this is that it allows you to make a create a connection with the client so they can see you're an actual real person and um and only have to click i think they just need to click a link that is texted to them so when they click that they see you on the camera waving at them saying the following by the way i just sent you a link to my personal info uh please click on that so you can make sure you get it and then they click on it you say hey there do you see my lovely face it's good to meet you now you can see me right yeah yeah and be charismatic confident meet and greet gain the rapport this is a cool little technique to just personalize the sales presentation a little bit more and i can assure you we have agents who use this that get the sale because they use the crank wheel option okay so you can text them a business card, but I like Crank Wheel because as you talk to them, they'll see your mouth move and see it all. It's like, hey, it's a real person. I think that's so important, especially there's an impersonal aspect to telesales that you don't get with face-to-face, -face, but this bridges the gap and makes, I think, people doing this and believing in you that much better, right? So use Crank Wheel. I think it's great. So getting the price now, hooking the back end, Mildred, so you don't have to pay anything today. Uh, or you don't have to pay anything today. Did, did you hear that? Just, just making sure you understand no payments today. That's If you don't say that, by the way, what we've seen 
a lot of clients will resist from buying because they think they have to pay today. So this is why we include this in the script. This is buy now, pay later. You don't have to pay anything today. Also, any of the pricing options is okay to choose. Higher or lower is totally fine. All we have to do from here is just submit your application to the insurance company to make sure you actually get an approval. We want them to say, okay. You can choose whichever amount of coverage you want. You're the one in control. Here we go. You ready for me to tell you the prices? Perfect. So we, we go from biggest to smallest in our price presentation. I'm not sure why Tim does that actually. Maybe he, if he pops on here, he can explain it. And then uh, my job is just to submit to you the application, see if you can get the approval. So which one do you want to get the approval for? So we say that that's a little softer than saying, which one do you want to buy? Which one fits your budget best? Getting approval is a little bit of an easier way to get commitment, okay? And we give them three different prices, right? So, uh, you know, big, so if we're doing, say the client agreed to uh, 80 to 100, I'll show 100, or I'll show 120, 180. That's what I would do. I like a little stretch goal uh, with my prices, but they've got three options. They write them down. And then we ask them which one they want to get the approval for. Okay. Again, here's and here's where that quote fast, sell slow comes into. So it's at this point, they're going to have objections. They're going to have questions. But look at them more as questions and reason, they're helping them to get reasons to buy than thinking it's like some grind out objection handling session here. They're going to have some, some questions for you. So feel free to overcome them. We're going to kind of go over some of the script here. But with the notes here in the script, if you sense their hesitation, work it out, find out the true objection, handle it until they sound satisfied, confirm their confidence. So you're good with picking one now, which one do you want to get an approval for? So make sure you're closing them as, in a sense what uh, Tim has written here or something like that, confirm that they're actually buying into it and are fully persuaded now. So if they buy, they're like, okay, I want to do that one. The script you're going to say is on the left side. Great, I'm already in the company website doing the application for you. Please spell your last name. This will literally take just a handful of minutes. Again, emphasizing that it's just really quick. And then get the rest of the information, do the app, and prepare for objections because they're going to come. Okay. Uh, you can also say if there's objections, misunderstandings, like um, I need to think about it or um, I'm not ready. The, the, the formula we use, there's some object, objection, uh, objections we'll talk about here in a minute. Um, is the understand, re-explain, reassure, and re reiterate and reassert. So we say, yes, um, you know, the price is too high. Yes, I totally understand that. But again, you don't have to go with the 120. Why don't you go with the $80 a month? That's a way better price. You should feel totally confident with that. And look, this is going to be the best value for you. Don't you agree? And then we go back up there and we say, like we said above, so which one are you good with? Pick? You want to pick with that one now? Uh, do you want to get approval on that? And we just reassert and then they agree. Okay, so this is the formula we use. We'll go over some objections here in a minute. Um, this is just questions about uh, the crank wheel. We'll skip that because we kind of explained it. If they, now here's some questions they'll ask uh, that are kind of like the objection questions here at the end. So here's how we handle them. Uh, what is the policy? What kind of coverage it is? Oh yeah, of course, it's whole life insurance. It's not term. It's not accidental insurance. This payment never goes up. And the coverage never cancels. And as simple as that's the best policy out there. If it's level coverage, it's I'm going to say it's first day full coverage from the first payment. And then I'll say, does that sound good? You want to go ahead and get approval. Which one do you want to get approval for? So for me, I want to wait, but then go ahead and then close them again on it. Hesitation, objection. I don't have time to do the application, but I'll do it another day. So we get that sometimes at the end. So here's where I say, oh, I know the companies out there are slow application, taking like 45 minutes to do. But what people don't know is our app carriers are really fast with their applications. I do applications six minutes flat. I'll, I'll always respect your time. So what's your street address? Let's just blast through this real quick and see if they'll approve you. Um, and what's your payment date? Remember, you're not going to pay anything until that date. So we're just assuming the sale. We're like, hey, this is really quick. Don't worry. And then closing with some assumptions here. What's your address? You don't have to, what's your payment date that you want again, right? And remember, you don't have to pay today. Again, we say that so many times because it's so <clears throat> common uh, what you'll hear a lot of the times, okay? Uh, if you don't object it, they'll, they won't even say, I, I don't want it because I have to pay today. They'll just say some other objection, right? So that's why we verbally say this. Hey, you don't have to pay today, remember, because that we want them to understand that there's no financial investment today because that's such a hangup. Objection, my policy is much cheaper. 
okay, I need to make sure we're comparing the same product. You know, does your current probably have, pro, pro, policy have any accidental? Does your current policy have, can, ever cancel? Does the payment ever go up? Which company is it? Get them to get the policy if you can. Don't waste his time on this unless it's it's to sell, it'll sell it. So again, sometimes it's like you can tell when you're asking these questions. That's what Tim's referencing here. The point is the goal with this line of questioning is to see if it's accidental or term that's expiring. If it is, try to replace it. They should they should not feel good about it. Be scared for them. You know, hey, this is not good. You got a policy that's expiring in five years. You're not gonna have anything. Why would you want to have this policy? What if you live? Well, you're probably gonna live past this. Why would you have this if that's the case, right? If it's straight whole life, you cannot beat it. Get off the phone and go quote somebody else, right? So if you find out there's just no way to do anything about it, then move on is the idea there, okay? So again, a little break here just to see if there's any questions. Um, and then we'll go back to some of the objection handling. Uh, yes, it's not there, Steve, because I haven't put it there yet, but I will after this concludes. And by the way, for the new people on the chat, uh, davidduford.com forward slash ISS, set up a new account. Uh, I will give you access and then I will upload this after the event is done. Is there a chance of reluctancy to sign today because by having them write the price down, is it possible the act of getting the price, writing it down, plant the seed to continue shopping, getting price? Uh, I don't think so. We do that because we want them to look at something and be able to make a decision, right? I think if you rattle off coverage, like give them three face amounts and then three coverage amounts and then three prices, they're probably not going to remember it, right? So the first one's fifteen thousand for sixty-seven dollars and fifty cents. The second one's eight thousand for fifty dollars and nine cents, and the third one's eight thousand for forty-five dollars and seventy-one cents. Which one do you want to do? And they're like, "Okay, how much was the ten? Now we're getting them to think too much, and and somebody who's confused because they got to think through what you just said to them is likely not going to buy, right? So writing it down makes it easier to buy. Good, Cody. Somebody's making some money off this. Good. You're welcome, Lori. Cool. Okay. All right, let's continue. All right. So this is, so a couple of objections here. We're kind of moving into the objections side of the uh, phase um, uh, of, 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 of what we're running into. We're going to just blast through those real quick. But when we ask the social security number, we call it the social number, all right? Just like every other company, they do a medical and prescription background check using your social number. So go ahead and hit me with your social number. Do not say social security number, right? Because that's a triggering word. People will think you're a scam. You don't need my social security number, right? So a social number is what we use, okay? So that's what we're going to say as we go through the application and begin filling it out, all right? Now here are just some, some uh, objections here. We'll go over these just very briefly. Um, I'll hit a few of these and then you guys can read through it because uh, there's quite a few of them and my voice is starting to rapidly deteriorate. <laughs> okay, we'll go to the, the cool down after this one. We'll do like the first three here. So probably the most common ones that we hear at the end of the call are, I need to think about it, I need to talk to my kids, and then uh, I'm not giving you my social security number, okay? And the bank account, which is basically the same. <clears throat> so when they say I need to think about it, here's what you say. That's fine, Mr. Jones, I can understand you feel that way, but when you say I need to think about it, how do you mean? So I, I need to think about it's an excuse, it's not a reason. So there's some underlying reasons why that we need to flesh out. So by saying how do you mean at the end of that sentence, it gets them to give you more information as what the true objection is. And once we get that, maybe it's the price, maybe it's the timing. So okay, besides price, is there any other issue than the price that needs to be addressed before making a decision? So we isolate the objection so that we know that's the only thing we need to overcome. And then the, here's how we sell why they should take it, despite the price being that way. So great, here's my proposition. Uh, I, we can do less than $80 a month, Mildred. So why don't we do this? I pulled up a number. Uh, let's go to 60. $60 is 7,000 in coverage and $50, 6,000. Look, that's a lot less than what the other ones are. It's still gonna cover the vast majority of your funeral expenses. Which one do you wanna get approval for today, right? So that's how we would do that. Um, that's one way you can use the script and say, hey, let's do let's do 60 or $70 a month instead. Bottom line, we don't know when uh, if you can qualify for it or if your health is, and your health isn't promised tomorrow, right? And isn't some coverage better than none? Plus we can always add more later. I like adding that we can always add more later line in because some people think they gotta get everything they want up front or nothing at all. Whereas we can just start them with something, a starter program and then add more later, right? 
And then the close is who do you want your beneficiary to be? Uh, if it's not, you know, so which one of the 60 or the 70 you want to use in that case, okay? I need to talk to my kids. We got to talk them out of that because they're not going to talk to their kids. They're, their kids, they're going to talk to them and they're going to say, Mama, you don't have to spend money. We'll take care of this. And they don't have the money. It's a bad idea. So here's what we like to say. That makes perfect sense to me. I totally understand. I'm sure your kids love you and want to do the best thing and care for you, right? I'm curious, Mrs. Jones. What do you think your kids will tell you? If they don't, if they don't say they'll tell me not to buy it, then suggest. Do you think they'll probably tell you they love you and they'll take care of it, and you don't have to give them this gift? Mrs. Jones, just be totally real with me here. Is this a gift you want to give your family member, no matter what they say? Again, we're, the the idea is to sell themselves on this. So if they say they do, if they say do it, or if they say don't do it, you really want to give them gift anyways, right? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. What most people do with their policies is basically hide it like a Christmas present. I think because none of us ever asked our kids permission to buy them a gift when they were younger, we don't ask them now that we're older. You know they're going to sacrifice too much for us, and you don't want them to sacrifice their financial future for your sake, right? So bottom line is we don't even know if we can get you approved for this gift you're buying for them, so let's continue with the application here see if we get approval. After you get approved, you can put a nice ribbon on the insurance policy like a gift and hide it away from the final day comes. So go on and spell your last name for me. So there's that one that, that's good to use. We also have this other variation. Uh, great, so here's my proposition, Mr. Jones. I think we both agree your children would prefer you having coverage over not having coverage, right? I mean, how would you feel if your children had to pull 10 grand out of nowhere to pay for your funeral expenses? Further, would you expect your grandkids to pay for your kids' ex funeral? And, and that that's a good little... Uh, 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 mental game there. It's like, yeah, why would my grandkids pay for their my kids? It doesn't make sense. Yeah, so of course not. So let's get you qualified for this plan so you can show your kids your plan after the fact and I can help with the questions they arise. So who do you want your beneficiary to be? And that closing question is to get into the application. Okay. Here's what we say if they have uh, the social security number issue. I can understand that. Here's the thing. Bottom line, you need to know you need to have coverage, right? You told me as much, considering you've talked about wanting to get this for your loved ones and getting them peace of mind, not worrying about the final expenses. And in order for us to get you approved, the company has to pull medical records. And the way every insurance company does is by using your social number. Rest assured, your privacy is 100% safe because it's stored with the carrier. And if I don't live up to my promise, look, I'll lose my job and I got to put food on the table, right? And all these companies take your information seriously and aggressively fire agents who don't. So what's your social? It's kind of the same thing here with the bank account, right? Right, I'll leave some of these other objections for you guys to read through. Um, there's quite a bit of them. Last little bit here is um, the transition to the cool down. So after you get the policy written up, you've done the application uh, and it's been approved, here's what we need to do to end the call. First, ask the client to grab a piece of paper to write the coverage down, your name and phone number on a piece of paper. And then you say the following. Okay, so to wrap this up, We've taken out a $12,000 policy. It's day one coverage, 100% from the first day. It's 50 bucks a month. The rate never increases and you cannot be canceled due to age or health. And down there is my phone name. Uh, you've written it down. Please feel free to call me with any questions about your policy. I'm your agent for life. At this point, do you have any questions? Do you feel, how do you feel about the coverage? Is the price, so this is all like, let's hear them say, yes, it's good. Yes, the price is great. Yes, I, I, I don't have any reason to get rid of this. I want to keep this. So this is that line of questioning here. And at this point, talk about anything other than insurance for a couple of minutes. You know, go back to maybe something they mentioned as you're asking health questions or they brought up that was unique and interesting and leave the call in a way to where the client feels like, hey, that's a nice guy, nice gal, really cared about me and did a good job. Okay? All right. And uh, that is pretty much the bulk of the objection handling. Again, I'll, I'll leave you guys to read the rest of the script. So with that said, let me transition over and I'm gonna open this up for questions um, related to the script or any questions that you have in general. Maybe you've popped on here late and you have questions about the business. It doesn't have to be necessarily about the script. Uh, that's totally fine too, be happy to address them. And then what we're gonna do is again, after this is over, go to davidduford.com forward slash ISS. The script will be uploaded word for word, everything that you just saw and more that we didn't get to. And you guys can jump in and pull it down. Okay, uh, let's see here. So again, I will answer questions for as long as you guys list them out. So 
if I get to the bottom here and there's just a few, then we're done. Uh, so if you got questions, type them out now and uh, I'll be happy to address everything. But as we get to the bottom and we're done, we're done, okay? Just a facts, ma'am. Is there a risk of them not signing today by having them write down the price? Oh, I think we, we talked about that. Um, the, the short was no. I don't think that you um, got that. It Writing them down and getting that stuff clarifies any confusing points. If you rattle off a bunch of prices and coverage amounts, they're not going to remember. And they're going to ask you, well, I don't know which one. What is the number again? And, and when you confuse them, they don't buy. Confused people don't buy anything. Crank wheel, how do we get it? Google search it and you'll be able to get it, okay? I don't know if it's, I don't think it's very expensive. I don't have the exact numbers. If somebody's using it, throw it in the chat. Um, it's worth the investment. Hey, Guam Tech, if you go into free lead program, it's is it possible to switch back to buying leads in full commission? Uh, yes, it is, but it's highly uh, not recommended. Most agents fare better just uh, staying on free leads. Um, and this is an industry issue. I think it's a psychological issue. There's something that changes when you go from a free lead program to buying your own leads. And it's like the difference between being a salesperson and, and a business owner. There's different sets of responsibilities. You're now financially at risk for, you know, uh, your investment in leads and that can play with your head. So uh, my take on it is if you're really doing well, keep doing really well with the free lead program. But with that said, we'll let you move to broker if you insist. Thank you, Cheryl. Uh, Kenya, where would you put the particulars of the Legacy Funeral Consumer Guardian Society in the script? Interesting question. Um, why don't we take a look together? So this is for my Lincoln Heritage friends and uh, also the uh, uh, senior life people. Or if you're selling SBLI and you're using their uh, Sequoia plan, I would probably insert this so I'm going to go way back up here, closer to the close. I would probably insert this right as we're talking about right in here. So blah, 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 blah. Also, then insert your kind of like a three-sentence script on the Funeral Consumer Guardian Society Legacy Assurance Sequoia Plan. Make it brief. Get to the point. Don't belabor it, right? But definitely insert it because it's a distinction that you guys have that can help you sell the deal that much better, right? Now, the other thing I would suggest is, you know, also compare notes with, you know, Lincoln Heritage and Senior Life um, managers and how they script this because I, I would think, again, I'm not a Senior Life uh, Lincoln Heritage salesperson, but if I think this is where at least at the minimum I would put this. But I might also include it in other parts of the script because having that product or that sizzle, I call it the sizzle to the steak, having that as a part of your script is really important because it justifies the higher prices. It's the it, What you're attempting to do is justify the higher prices that Senior Life and Lincoln Heritage on average have compared to other options. And the only way to justify higher prices with higher perceived value. And if you don't use the Funeral Consumer Guardian Society, you know this, it's, it's, you commoditize, meaning, you know, what's your whole life product any different from mine but besides coverage and price? So you really have to make sure you're selling that benefit. Maybe you sell that at the close, maybe post-close, um, but you have to include it in the script to differentiate if you're going to make, especially if you intend to replace, because you're not going to win based off of price and coverage. You're going to have to win on getting them to believe the perceived value. Okay. All right. Here comes the questions. Perfect. Uh, how do you handle cross sales? Do you address it at renewals? Uh, you can cross sell. Um, I have agents who will cross sell other products on a failed final expense sale attempt. So other products include Medicare products, annuities. Um, you can do it on three, six, nine, 12 month. Uh, time periods, especially six months is a good place, I think, to maybe sell another policy, especially 12 months. Also, a great time to sell more final expense would be at uh, a month to 45 days out from their birthday. Uh, Colonial Pen did this for years in their marketing. They would send you a letter about 60 days out saying, happy birthday. Don't you want to buy coverage for it? it's more expensive? It's a good reason why to buy if you've been kind of on the fence for it. 
Rhonda Ringer Holloway, thanks for the invite. However, I'm needing to contact you to move forward. Just fill out the application. Uh, good. Yeah. We're getting back in the office. We had that uh, New Year's break, after all. So I think we had like 25, 30 applications from agents. So Marty is uh, working his way through it. Yeah, so Robert, this is recorded. So all you got to do is get back in, um, uh, use the same link, and then uh, in about like 30 minutes, YouTube will have this right as a recording, and then you can watch it as you need to. Uh, it will be on the forum. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll post it in the forum, and I think I'll create a module too to put the uh, script in as well. What about tactfully ending with a referral quest? Sure, yeah, go for it. Yeah, I thought so. Crank will is free. That's what I thought too, yeah. Appreciate it, Robert. Thank you. Uh, we're, we're not captive in the sense we make you sign a contract, but look, if you're going to do free leads with us, why would we work with you if you've got carriers with final expense that are full commission elsewhere? Like, it's just a risk. And I'm not saying that, you know, agents are liars, but you got to trust the cards, right? Trust but cut the cards. So if you're going to do a free lead program, you got to have all your carriers with us. And if you can't move them, you get it, you're going to have to terminate them. Um, and again, that's just the cost for getting free, high quality, fresh, exclusive leads. Um, so yeah, but again, there's a risk if we don't do that, that a rogue agent will develop leads for, we'll place them elsewhere and we can't run a business like that, right? Hopefully it makes sense. When you get their budget, do you find that most people give a dollar amount that is lower than what they're really looking to pay? Yeah, I mean, possibly. I tend to teach agents to trust what they hear and not push them to spend more because, you know, that, you know, our clients are old and on fixed incomes. And look, you know, you can only squeeze so much blood out of a turnip. So if they say it's 80 to 20 or 80 to 100, uh, I'll show them a 120 along with 180 at the close. Uh, but I'm not going to push any more than that. Like, I'm just going to push a little bit, but I'm going to also retain the option to get 100 or an 80. Does that make sense? So, um, again, a good rule of thumb in this business, and this is what makes the difference between like typical retail sales, like a car lot versus insurance, is that the policy that stays is the policy that pays you. So for example, you can get a close on a car lot and I don't, what's your clawback you know, period? 15 days, 30 days at most? With life insurance, it's 90, it's 270 days that you're gonna have a chargeback of some prorated amount. And so this should inform you uh, intimately on how you're going to sell this thing. Like, it's not about the policy size. It's about, is it affordable for the client, right? The money takes care of itself in this business if you make sure the client is comfortable paying it. But if you make them overstretched in the financial positions they're in, you're going to have a lot more lapses. And you'll be in a position where, you know, good night. You know, you're going to be out of this business with chargebacks. Uh, okay. Good question, though. What is the average lifetime value of a final expense consumer? So the main metric that I use that I think really is the only thing that matters for 99% of agents is the first year commission. And uh, the average case size, it's gonna, the commission you get paid depends on your program. If you're buying leads, you're getting free leads, right? For us, it's 890 annualized premium for telesales. So if you're in a free lead program, you're getting half of that. So that's about 445, right? Right, yeah. And then for face-to-face -face or for, for a broker program, that would be 900, right? Or 890. It's going to vary if you write guaranteed it should be a little bit less. Uh, and then you'll get renewals if you're on the broker side. But the renewals aren't anything that anybody ever retires over. Like it's it's not something that, you know, I get ex you should get excited about unless you're building an agency and, you know, there's more renewals because of the sheer volume of business you're doing. That's a little bit different. But for the agent, I mean... It's two or three bucks per policy per month. And I mean, you got to write a thousand policies before it actually is anything worthwhile, in my opinion. Uh, no, you got to buy your own insurance toolkit. We don't have a corporate account, but it's just like 35 bucks a month. Regarding the script, are we required to follow the script precisely or can we make small modifications? Kevin, it's just going to depend. And you got, you, you're, and you could probably notice I made some modifications. There was something I said in there that wasn't in the script because it just, like, I'm your agent for life. That's what I said that wasn't in the script. I like that better than I'm your servicing agent. And that, that was just kind of off the cuff. So, like, th there's some points in the script where you can say the same thing but with different words.
but you run this risk of, oh, well, if I can just say that, I'm going to say whatever I want. And then you lose sight of the reason you even have the script, which is a surefire proven track to run on. The, the short of it is, you're better, Kevin, and everybody else just doing what you're told and following the script until you've got some success before you start modifying it. Because a lot of the times, new people don't know what they don't know. And they think something as harmless as changing a few words is, is just going to make you feel better, but it may change the whole character of how the client perceives things. So as you get onboarded with us, we'll talk to you about that. Um, is there room for it on a minor scale? Sure. But you don't want to go out there and like come up with your own stylistic interpretation. Not a good idea. Uh, commission split uh, uh, for brokers, 100% commission. For free lead agents, 50% commission. While on the prospect call, is someone in DIG available to answer a question? Uh, we have a Slack chat. You can ask questions. We're thinking about rolling out a Zoom room where you can ask questions as well. But you've got, you'll have your trainer's uh, uh, phone number. You can text them. The Slack room, the forum, lots of ways to get help. Agree on your placement of legacy assurance? Yeah, if you're going to sell that product, and you don't have to sell it to be successful in this business. I never sold any of these products ever. Um, but if you're going to sell it, if you're going to sell a senior life for Lincoln Heritage, you better be selling that product because you cannot, if you go in and sell a high price, a higher price product and, and don't sell the sizzle, you're going to get replaced. And it's going to not make this business fun. You have to sell the perceived value um, uh, if you're going to sell those products, period. Should your b business card, oh, the $800, $900, how are they free leads? Did I miss something? So we have a free lead program and a lead program where you buy. The difference is what your commission level is. If you're getting free leads, it's going to be lower to offset our expenses for the leads. If you're buying your own, you're going to get paid a little bit more. Hopefully that explains. And then, so based off of the case size of about $900, you can estimate what your average case size is going to be at 50%, 450 at 100%, 900 Hey, Alex, uh, should our business card only have our name? Dig is not mentioned anywhere, correct? I'd imagine we don't want them Googling and finding these training videos. What's wrong with that, Alex? You trying to say something here? What's up? Uh, you know, here's the thing. It's actually a good question. What value does the Dig agency give your clients? Do they even care? No. And look, I like me. I like my business. I'm proud of what I've done uh, in the time I've done it. But I'm also pragmatic and realistic. Your clients could care less about the dig agency. You know who they care about? Alex, Rhonda, Dave Duford. They care about you. It's the client, or it's you, the agent that makes a sale, not the company, not the carrier. It's your relationship and connection with the client and what you're able to convince them of. And, and their ability to believe in you. And so for that reason, I don't include that stuff um, or I don't recommend it because it doesn't make a difference, really. The dialer we use is Kixi. How rigorous is the ramp up process with call reviews, et cetera? Um, it's pretty rigorous. Uh, you'll have, for the free lead program, uh, you'll be responsible for reviewing the script and recording yourself a number of times. Uh, there's nothing better than just rote memorization. And then you'll be asked to perform that script with our trainer before we let you on free leads. If we don't like what we hear, we'll, act, we'll ask you to go back and study it more. Um, that's on the free lead program. With, with the broker program, you can start at any point that you want to. We have daily trainings, 30-minute uh, daily huddles, uh, call reviews that we have that you can listen to. Um, really, the rigorousness is really up to you uh, to the amount that you listen to them and, 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 and uh, imbue what it is or embody what it is that you're listening to. Uh, we have the best training in the market, uh, hands down. Nobody beats us with training because we know it works. But we also realize like at some point you got to go out there and actually sell the stuff to be successful, right? So um, our commitment is definitely getting you well trained so that you're ready for battle. No to the free lead program on Medicare. Uh, is policy owner allowed to increase their death benefit after the policy put in place? No, um, you have to just write a new policy. That's what we usually do. For those that use Crankwell, do they leave it on for the remainder of the call? I think they just turn it on and then take it off. But that's a good question for Tim, Luke. I would email him that. Michael, if an agent places with Dig, does Dig sell Lincoln or Senior Life? No, we do not sell either product. Uh, we just don't need to. Um, the only reason I would sell for Lincoln 
or senior life is that I'm completely committed to their way of doing business, their, the way that they teach it, the way that they believe in it. You have to be all in completely, I think, to be successful with Lincoln or to be successful with Lincoln or, or, or senior life. Um, if you like the idea of the funeral consumer guard, like the, the extra programs, then just sell the Sequoia program with SBLI. That's our one of our main carriers. It essentially does something similar to FCGS and the Legacy Assurance Program. So we don't, I mean, we don't need Lincoln because we have other options that are better priced, better coverage value as far as underwriting goes. So there's no reason to sell them. Again, um, in a broker world, they're just kind of like, why would I have these companies when I've got so many other better options when it comes to price and coverage? So that's why if you're gonna sell those products, go all in with them, don't be a broker. Is there an appointment setting as well if you just wanna show up and sell in person? Uh, yeah, we can hook you up with appointment setters. We've got people in our group that can assist with that for sure. And the alpha lead program, can we have the policy mailed to us so that I can insert anything additional with the policy, like a thank you letter, my business card? Um, Yes, but why don't you just send that separately? That's what I would do. You don't need to have that policy sent to you. Uh, there's agents that do policy deliveries but are more for face-to-face. -face. I find that 99% of agents are better at selling and having the policies sent to them to then go deliver it to them, whether it's by mail or in person, it gets out of the sales cycle stuff. Now, there are agents who do very well with it that garner referrals. I I'm not gonna question their success doing it, but for most agents, you're better served just getting the policy delivered directly from the company to the client. And if you want to send them anything else, just do it separately. Are there additional incentives on a free lead program based on production levels at the current time? No, um, just straight commission at a very good rate relative to the other options and uh, great leads and great training. For Crankwell, we end the video once the call's over. Thank you, Jay, appreciate that. For medical questions, do we use your medical question sheet from the last script or only use the medical questions. For, I would use the questions that are listed on the script and collect information there. Um, we the, the old medical script we use is kind of, you can still use it, but a lot of agents are using insurance toolkits and putting the information they're hearing from the client in. So it just really depends on what your comfort level is. Okay, any last questions here before we wrap this bad boy up? So. Had a total of, looks like we're running live for what, two hours or here or so, it's pretty good. And then um, maxed out at 256 lives. That's cool, awesome. Last questions, y'all. So while we wait for last questions, of course, shameless plug. If you like what you've heard today, this is just a small sampling of what we do for our agents. We absolutely care about your success, selling insurance successfully over the phone. And at the Dig Agency, we specialize in telesales. Again, we do a free lead program where you get the leads at no cost to you. They're fresh and exclusive, combined with great training, a great CRM process, and agents who are verifiably making great money. Uh, you can join doing that. Or if you're the type that's more entrepreneurial and want to buy your own leads, you can buy your own leads in our broker program. Uh, we have access to uh, proprietary products that not many other agencies, especially the MLM, three-letter IMOs don't have that are fantastic for telesales uh, that are competitively priced, have great underwriting, and are very easy to use. And, uh, you know, we're working, you'd work with an agency that cares about you selling successfully and is uh, committed to the MLM Kool-Aid drinking scheme that so many other agencies are. So um, there it is. So if you want to learn more about joining the agency, davidduford.com, click the FAQ link for a much more detailed overview of the agency. You can join a Q&A call uh, that we do daily to ask questions uh, live from one of the members of our team. And you can apply by going to davidduford.com forward slash apply. Okay, a couple other things here. Uh, people threw out some extra questions. How do you recommend to keep the client engaged? You ask rapport building questions. So this is where you ask rapport building questions as you're asking the questions. And sometimes they'll tell you about their health and all their problems. And that's a good way to kind of connect with them too. What lead sources do you think are the best options for new agents? Uh, go watch the beginning of this, Robert. Uh, Facebook leads and TV leads are really it for telesales. Uh, to get higher commission levels, Scott, you gotta do production uh, with our core carriers. And we lay that out in our commission grids. It's very achievable on a production basis. You can also recruit agents if you want to that we can help train for you and that will count towards that production increase as well. 
Uh, thank you, Dan. I do too. Thank uh, Tim. Tim Hildebrand is the brain behind it, our telesales trainer. Do you recommend agents create their own leads in the first six months? No, not at all, unless you have prior experience with Facebook marketing. Just work with an agency like ours that will do it for you so you can focus on learning how to sell or just buy leads from a good vendor like ttcleads.com. Appreciate it, Kenya. Uh, January 25th. Oh, yeah. We also do a, uh, we also are going to be in Orlando uh, on January 25th, Las Vegas on February 24th, and then Houston on February 23rd or March 23rd for our roadshow events. Uh, these are training focused events, predominantly for final expense, both face to face and telesales. They're smaller groups. It's not like a big uh, stampede of, of stuff, and, and it's not a hoorah, rah rah event. Uh, we're going to have top producers come in and talk shop on selling final expense in person over the phone. We're going to do more training like this as well. Uh, at some of the events, we'll have even Stephen Burgess talk about annuity sales. We'll have some great product and carrier training. We've got a great new product coming out that nobody is talking about that's uh, related to final expense but isn't quite final expense that we're going to talk about exclusively inside of these uh, roadshow events. It's like $70 to come to the event. Um, it's great training, a great fun opportunity. If you go to davidufour.com, click like Roadshow at the top, buy a ticket. Don't worry if you already haven't received them. I will be spamming your inbox with a lot more um, reminders to buy tickets to these events. So please do. Uh, okay. We're gonna, da, 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 da. Hey, Virginia. Thank you. Appreciate it. Nice words too. I work for Assurance selling free leads. They are slow to release. How do you recommend switching? American Cowboy, we have carriers you don't have. So go ahead and apply to work with us. It's likely the carriers you work with uh, a select quote or assurance doesn't have. Appreciate it, Preston, Adam, Kevin. Thanks for staying with us to the end here. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, four to five AD is our primary uh, lineup, but we go up, we have 25 plus carriers. Uh, thank you, Joe. Appreciate it. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you, Scott. Appreciate it. Sounds good. Y'all have a good rest of the day. See you around.